the temperature hit 100 degrees. It doesn't feel much like football weather outside, but we're here to tell you football season it is, as tonight here at Haygood Stadium on the campus of Aiken High School. Aiken High, the Fighting Green Hornets play host to Strom Thurmond, the Rebels from right up the way in Edgefield County as they've come down Highway 19 to Aiken, and they're going to open the season here in week zero as it'll be the Hornets against the Rebels in the Goals Gym game of the week. Welcome to the pregame show. I'm Ed Gerardo. I'll be doing your play-by-play -play this evening along with Ken Brace. Uh, the coach is back, our ace an analyst, and then on the sideline for the Holly Tractor sideline report, Noah Fight, the Aiken Standard sports editor, will be handling all of that for us. Two game, two teams that uh, last year, uh, Storm Thurman always one of the best teams in the area. Aiken uh, struggled a little bit last year, but let's talk a little bit about Storm Thurman, coach. Uh, Storm Thurman, they've got a, a new coach. They're gonna have to see what life is like without Lee Sawyer at the helm. Yeah, and I'm, I'm gonna miss Lee Sawyer. I was always impressed by him, thought he was a great high school football coach. Uh, super job that he did, uh, winning coach year after year after year. I think his record ended up something like 123 wins and only 24 losses or something in that ballpark. Uh, but the young guy that's taken over, He's going to be a first-year coach, but he's not first-year to Strom Thurmond. Uh, he's one of their best players ever. He was an all-star quarterback back in 1999 for Strom Thurmond. He's been a coach at Strom Thurmond for seven years. He's had some wonderful things to say about his relationship with Lee Sawyer. So they're turning over the reins to Antoine Hillary, and I don't think they're going to skip a beat with him at the lead. Yeah, and, and when you get players coming back like a Chad Gilchrist, you got to feel pretty good. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I think he's, if I had to pick a running back that reminds me of the kid from Georgia Gurley, uh, it would be Gilchrist. I think he's very similar at, at the high school level. Uh, a couple neat things we're going to talk about later on, one of which is uh, Tyree Stidham is now going to be the quarterback, and I'm very curious to see how that works out this year. Absolutely. In the meantime, Aiken had a tough go of it last year. Uh, you know, their coach, uh, had a tough time in the fact that he came in, didn't have spring practice, had to be thrown into it, try to figure things out. Didn't have what they would like to have, but I think uh, from watching them in the Jamboree, they're going to be much, much improved. I think so, and uh, you mentioned Brian Neal, and in a lot of ways it really is, even though it's his second season, in a lot of ways it's like it's his first full season because, as, as you said, he, uh, he, didn't, he didn't get to have any spring practice, really was kind of playing catch-up with uh, the summer programs. And, uh, you know, he's been trying to, to rebuild the program from the, the ground up, uh, get a, a, a new influx of, uh, of players to come out, and he's, he's successful doing that. And I think that's one of the biggest positives um, you can take away from Aiken just coming into the game tonight is that you look at their roster, there's a lot of kids there who were, uh, were on the team last year that they have experience at the varsity level, and you couldn't say that for the past few seasons. Yeah, and one thing that we'll get to see, Strom Thurmond very, very, very fast talking to their broadcast team earlier, and they were just talking about the speed that they return. But Aiken has always been known as a fast team, too, and I think Aiken will have some speed as well. Absolutely. On the, on the perimeters, they're going uh, to be tough to, to tie down, and we'll talk a little bit about some of the guys in, individually. But, uh, yeah, they have their fair share of athletes. Okay, well, that's uh, the two teams that we have for you tonight. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to take a look around the area at the other games. Got a short schedule. It's week zero, and still don't understand why it's not week one, but that's okay. <laughs> it's week zero, not a full slate of games. A couple have a night off, but uh, we'll talk about the games that are coming up when we return on the Goals Gym Game of the Week. In 1963, family owned and operated for 50 years and dedicated to customer service with safety of your family, our top priority. Tyler's Tire is a full service tire retail, tire repair, and automotive repair facility with ASC certified mechanics. Located in two locations, 1019 Richland Avenue West and 1518 Whiskey Road. Let our family take care of yours, Tyler's Tire and Auto Center. You can smile. I love to smile. I was so pleased that I could get all of my dentistry work done in just one visit. You can smile. Painless, that's how I would describe it. Here at the Center for Dentistry, it has been a wonderful experience. 
with the comprehensive nature of this office, this one office, I can bring my family here and we can have it all done at one place. You can smile. Center for Dentistry, 1391 Silver Bluff Road, Aiken. From our Looney Tunes Savings Club that teaches young people their first lessons about managing money to free financial counseling services for adults, Security Federal Bank grows with our customers and has a service to meet every need. Established right here in Aiken County in 1922, we continue to be your hometown bank. We always work to meet the changing needs of our customers. That's why we've become a company that can meet every need for financial services. From online banking, bill pay, mortgage products, trusts, and a full line of insurance products. If we were you, we'd bank with us. Were you hurt on the job? Are you trying to keep your work comp payments? Do you feel like no one is listening? Your employer, the company doctor, the insurance company? Well, we're listening. We have a team dedicated exclusively to helping people hurt on the job. Our workers' compensation team has helped hundreds of injured South Carolinians. Call us now and let us listen to you. For a legal consultation, contact the ChandlerLawFirm.com. You can count on Chandler. Welcome back. Don't forget to pick up a copy of the Aiken Standard tomorrow morning for all of the reviews of write-ups of all the games in the area every Saturday throughout the high school football season. And also you want to get it on Sunday when we'll have game balls presented to the players of the week for doing the best along the way. And also on Monday we'll reveal our top ten power ranking Tuesday, we'll reveal the Wave Aiken Standard Player of the Week. So you want to make sure you have the Aiken Standard in hand all those days as we go along throughout the season to keep up with your favorite high school, if not every one of them may be your high, favorite high school. They're every, all ten our favorites. We can't name a favorite, can we? We should not. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. The fact that I went to Aiken doesn't have anything to do with it. So there but anyway, all right, what we're going to do now, we're going to do just like we did last season. We're going to look around at some of the other games. Again, we're here at Aiken High. Aiken High is hosting Strom Thurmond. But uh, we got some other interesting games going on around the area. And uh, we'll start with our sports editor, who's always on top of everything. North Augusta, they've got uh, visitors from Georgia coming over Lakeside, yeah. right? They do. And uh, North Augusta, like we talked about a little bit with Antoine Hillary and even Brian Neal, North Augusta also has a, a coaching change that uh, – for a long time, Dan Pippen was there and had a tremendous amount of success. He's since moved on to Greenwood, where uh, I imagine he's going to have uh, continued success. But taking over now at North Augusta is, uh, is Brian Thomas, who comes uh, from North Carolina. He's at uh, a school called uh, Northern Guilford, where he was a defense coordinator there for the first three years the school was in existence. They won three state championships. His first year, served one year as a head coach there. They went to the state championship game uh, again. So he brings a, not a deep resume, but a pretty successful one. And I know he's really excited. He's actually from, uh, he's got family and uh, folks in South Carolina. So he's excited to be able to come back. And, and he, uh, he's taken over a team. It's, it's a team in change that they, I think in our all Aiken Standard team last year, we had a dozen or 13 North Augusta players on the, on the squad. And so uh, a lot of them are, have since gone uh, to graduation. But one player they definitely do have to come back is quarterback Trib Reese who uh, is, is by far the uh, the best uh, in the area as far as what he's accomplished uh, on the field statistically. Yeah, and Trib Reese, when you have a quarterback like that coach, I imagine you can do a lot with him on offense, and they return a pretty good defense too. Yeah, they're, uh, they're a solid team. Uh, over the last several years, they've been probably the best team in our area, frankly, and uh, in their region, at least, and in their division. Strom Thurmond would rank right up there, and of course, in their division, Silver Bluff fits right in there, too. But at any rate, they've been very, very good at North Augusta, and they have what I think is the most important ingredient in Trib Reese, and, uh, and you've mentioned him. I think he'll have an outstanding year. He was uh, statistically far and away the best quarterback in the area last year, and we've got a lot of young quarterbacks or inexperienced quarterbacks playing this year and for different teams. Uh, I think he's going to be the one to watch in terms of uh, a passer, particularly. Okay, there are a couple of the guys that are exciting running the ball, and we'll talk about them as we get to it, but uh, I think he's the key to their success offensively this year. Okay, uh, their coach, Brian Thomas, uh, I like his pedigree, okay, and uh, they've got everything going for them. The community supportive. The kids are out. Uh, they've got success, and uh, so he's stepping into a good situation. And uh, Lakeside, do we know anything about We them? do. Uh, they, uh, it actually makes for an interesting matchup that uh, they come with uh, 
with um, a player who is uh, one of the hot, hottest recruited players in the country in, uh, in uh, Roundtree, and uh, Rashad Roundtree. He's, uh, he's gotten offers from every major program in the country. He's a defensive back, so that's going to make for an interesting matchup as far as what North Augusta is, wants to do and is able to do passing the ball versus what he might, uh, some problems he might cause. Beyond that, they're, uh, they're a zone read uh, team on offense. They don't have one or two standout guys, but what they, they lack in a superstar, they make up with good depth. Yeah, so it should be interesting to see how that one turns out as the night wears on. And North Our Augusta did beat them last year, 38 to 22, but we got two different teams. This well, year. but 22 yeah. points is pr nah, it's not as big a spread as you might have thought. That's so right. that, that could be a really good game. Uh, Abbeville's at Silver Bluff. Silver Bluff actually was the opponent of North Augusta this past week in Jamboree. Um, struggled a little bit. They had a long pass for a touchdown. Then they snapped the ball over the punter's head, and North Augusta recovered on the two. Mm -hmm. Uh, that probably played as much into it as Silver Bluff playing poorly. Yeah, and it, it's a tough matchup for Silver Bluff. Uh, that, as we mentioned uh, before with North Augusta, it's probably with Silver Bluff more than any other area team. They have a huge roster turnover with uh, just losing all those guys who were so critical to their run to the state championship game last year. But what they do have is they have the coaching uh, staff is intact. Al Lown uh, flirted with retirement, but he, he decided to come back for at least one more year, maybe more. And I think the fact that he's there, his, his assistants that have some have been with him for 22 years, they're all there. I think that, that gives uh, Silver Bluff a sense of stability, going to allow them to, uh, to remain competitive as these younger players who struggled a little bit in the Jamboree come along and learn what they're supposed to do more. And I know, Coach, you feel the same way as I do. As long as you have Al Lown, you're in pretty good shape. I loved what you put in the article in the newspaper when you gave the preview and you said, you know, we've got new dogs, but uh, the old master's still there. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm certainly glad to see him here because we lost some really good coaches out of the area. And uh, he's right up there with those other guys that uh, he is a spectacular high school football coach. And I love the fact that he's got all of his coaches back with him. But they're a team that is a little bit unknown. We're used to seeing them win. They've got a number of uh, regional championships and so on uh, over the past few years. But uh, they're kind of an unknown quantity this year it's it's an interesting matchup that with the the with their wing tee they're going to be able to run the ball they're gonna they're gonna be able to pick up yards that way they're gonna do some things on special teams but how good will the defense be and will they be able to throw the ball when they're in those situations that's going to be the the test for them this season and Al Lown has said we're going to be very fundamental mm -hmm. and we're going to run the plays that we know how to run and that does mean the wing tee and mm -hmm. he'll, he'll put on a clinic again this year and you can one thing you can count on they'll be good by the end of the season Dreer is at Fox Creek. Uh, Fox Creek is an interesting team, um, but Dreer is a, was one that uh, had their number when they played last year. Uh, good size school, good uh, you know Columbia area. Uh, they they have most of their guys back. I expect that they may cause some problems for Fox Creek tonight as they kind of uh, get the find their way with a new quarterback, new offensive coordinator. Um, should be a good team, but maybe not uh, what we see tonight. Yeah, and uh, Swires is going to be a good player, both offensively and defensively for Fox Creek. And I like Corey Lucas also. He's, a, he's very, very good. I was impressed by both of those young men. They've got some other good players, but I think Dreyer might be a little tough for him tonight. And our other game that th we have is Williston going to Bamberg. Two top ten, a, a big game in 1A football. Absolutely. Uh, Williston, an, another uh, new head coach in the area with Derek Youngblood, uh, much like Antoine Hillary, was uh, was coordinator for a long time under Dwayne Garrick, taking over. Um, but, uh, again, they lost some key personnel beyond the head coach. And Bamberg, while they lost some, some big-time players as well, they have uh, three top recruits playing for them this, uh, this season. So tonight it, it's going to be a tough test for Williston. And it's kind of a strange situation with the last three years, even though Williston has won the region and played very, very well in, that, in state tournaments and so on, they have not been successful in their first or second ball game overall the last couple of years. And I think they may have a problem tonight also. And that'll be a fun game to check on tomorrow and see how the, they did between the two of them as both of them come into the season ranked in the top 10 in 1A football. All right, we're going to take a break, and then when we come back, we're going to talk specifically about tonight's matchup, Aiken playing host to Strom Thurmond when we return on the Goals Gym Game of the Week. Pruitt Health is here to help. For more than four decades, Pruitt Health has partnered with healthcare professionals to deliver exceptional care to families across the Southeast. Since the beginning, our focus has always been on quality 
quality programs, quality services, and quality people. Looking forward to the future, we've developed an innovative model of care to provide comprehensive, streamlined solutions. Get well for life with Pruitt Health. What a crowd we have on hand tonight. And last, before kickoff, here comes the game ball. Set to be brought in from the sky by a parachute. The crowd has spotted him as he comes in for a landing. Oh, that's gonna hurt. From orthopedics to neurology, imaging to pain management, or even if a good idea just turns into an accident, CMI can help you play again. Learn more at CMI.md. A Holly Tractor has been Aiken's place for farm equipment, implements, accessories, and supplies. But did you know that Holly is your place for home yard equipment too? Riding and push mowers, weed eaters, chainsaws, and brands including Kubota, Husqvarna, and still equipment you can depend on. Come inside and see our expanded showroom. Holly is the exclusive dealer for Yeti coolers and now carry Generac generators. Holly Tractor, 1721 Richland Avenue East. Two and a half years ago, we had our first child at Aiken Regional. When our second child was on the way, we knew we wanted to go back to women's life care. But this time, it got complicated. At 25 weeks pregnant, I had to have my gallbladder removed. I would have been terrified, but Dr. Mento and his staff were so caring. When you trust your hospital this much, there's really no reason to go anywhere else. I should know. I was born there, too. Unique Expressions in the Mitchell Shopping Center is a treasure chest of gifts for all occasions. The collegiate collection is second to none. South Carolina, Clemson, Georgia, ACC or SEC. Support your favorite school. From clothing to mailboxes to tailgating items, Unique Expressions has them all. Handbags by Spartina and the Vera Bradley Collection. And a U.S. Post Office on site for your mailing convenience. Stop in today at Unique Expressions, 1521 Whiskey Road. At Spex Vision Center, we are focused on total eye care, be it our large selection of designer frames, latest and contact lenses, or our great sunglass collection. We have just what you're looking for. Our doctors offer years of experience and use the latest technology to ensure a comprehensive eye examination. Late afternoon and Saturday appointments are available, so if you want the best in eye care, call Spex today at 642-9902. Welcome back. The Aiken High School Marching Band getting us ready for the game tonight between Aiken High School and Strom Thurmond in the Gold's Gym Game of the Week. Brought to you live on Channel 12, My 12, 12.2. And that's on Atlantic Broadband Channel 7, as well as on www.akenstandard.com. Live every Friday night, the Gold's Gym game of the week and also uh, it's available throughout the week on Atlantic Broadband on channel 12 in replay so you might want to find that out you may be watching it now you just never know what's going on and who's watching you in all right tonight Aiken <laughs> is playing host to Strom Thurmond again let's go over Strom Thurmond a little bit uh, I, again to me Chad Gilchrist is the key person that I think they come out, they're going to hand it to him a lot early and often. Yeah, it sounds like it to me. I, I, if I was coaching their team, I think that's what I'd do also. Uh, but they do have Deion Chin also, who's another big back. And these kids are big. I mean, uh, Gilchrist is six foot one, goes around 210, I think, at this point. Big, strong, fast. Uh, Chin is another big, strong power running back. And then they have a quarterback that's new. He's a receiver by trade, but they're making him a quarterback this year. I always found that very difficult to do, to put a kid in there. He backed up uh, Hammond a little bit last year, but he really hasn't got a lot of experience at quarterback, but at least he knows where the receivers are supposed to be when he's looking downfield for him. So I think that'll be good. Uh, interesting scenario, though, uh, and I am really impressed. They're a 2A team. They don't have one player going both ways. They are two platoon completely. They have more depth this year than I believe they had last year. May not be quite as talented as some of the players they gave up, but they've got some depth. No, you're absolutely right about the depth. And, and what they also have is uh, last year, aside from a player or two on defense, they're pretty green. 
They had a lot of new guys, and sometimes that show where they uh, they'd win games, but they had to do it in a shootout. This year they have they have a pretty good amount of experience coming back, and the main guy it starts up front is the nose guard uh, Chad Stevens. <laughs> he is real big. He is real tough, and at six foot four, six five, having that right in the middle. That can set the tone whether he's – I think he, he was second on the team in sacks last year, which is pretty significant from the guy coming up the middle. And then uh, to, to be able to do that also to push the pocket around and just stuff the run, I, I think that they're going to be better on defense than we saw last year. Well, that would be interesting. Tonight's going to be interesting for the guys that are that big, 6'4". I think he goes 295. Yeah. In this heat and humidity, uh, I think he would be really hard-pressed if he wasn't just going one way. And we're going to see that on the other side of the ball, by the way. Now, Aiken, on the other hand, we kind of know who's going to be playing for Strom Thurmond, the key people. Aiken, we may see a lot of different players and a lot of different looks, but it does start with Bryson Jones at quarterback. It does, and that's uh, you know that's kind of the, the, the unknown quantity is that he's been with the team for a few years. He's, uh, he's gone back and forth a little bit between the, the junior varsity and the varsity, and he's done very well as a quarterback of the junior varsity squad. But it's a, it's a whole new challenge now to come and do it uh, at this level. And their, their offense, you know, I think will be as good as he is, that uh, he certainly has the capabilities to, to do some special things. He, he, can, he can throw on the move. He can throw. And he can also uh, be a factor tucking the ball away and running it. Um, so if he's able to execute, uh, I think that, that that bodes well for Aiken because beyond him, they have a lot of very talented, athletic skill guys, a couple of, uh, of, of good running backs in, uh, in Sanders and Lewis. They have a couple of guys on the outside in, uh, in uh, Chandler and Quamaine Simpkins who can definitely, if they get in some open spaces, they could be off the races. They may not be, be caught. And uh, the one thing I'm curious to see, how Jones handles the 3-5 defense that he's going to see that Strom Thurmond is going to run tonight because they've got a lot of people back to defend against the pass. They're going to be blitzing from different areas. Uh, tough for uh, an inexperienced quarterback at the varsity level, at least, uh, to face that his first time out of the box. Well, we're only a few minutes away from kickoff to the 2014 season. We're going to take a break. It is hot. It's very hot, and it'll be interesting to see what effect that plays on the players as well. I'm sure we'll get some water breaks and we may even see a few cramps before the night is over. I think we're going to see cramps, water breaks, and some mistakes tonight. It's the first ball game, and uh, that's, that's norm normally what happens. All right, we'll take a break, and we come back. We'll have the kickoff for tonight's game, the Goals Gym Game of the Week, when we return. Most people think the Y is a gym, but to me, it's so much more. When I needed help, the Y gave my kids a scholarship to a safe place where they could grow, learn, and have fun. And when I was struggling with all kinds of health issues, they gave me the guidance and motivation to get well. The Y helps families create a better future and become so much more. So give, join, or volunteer at the Y. Since 1970, Bragg Heating Company has been keeping Aiken and the surrounding communities comfortable. Our factory trained staff can keep you on top of the latest in heating and cooling technology, and our complete metal shop allows us to make any specialty piece your home may need. We recommend the best systems for your home, Train, Carrier, Dakin, Mitsubishi Ductless, and Boss Geothermal Systems. We accept most major credit cards and offer financing, so when you need your system maintained, repaired, or replaced, Called Bragg Heating Company. We're here to make you comfortable. One evening we were sitting around the table, my four-year-old stood up in his chair and he said, Dad, I want to be just like you. And I thought, that's great, until he said, I want to be nice and big and fat. It was at that moment I realized I need to make a change. I took the scales at over 208 pounds and that was the point that I realized I really needed to make a change. In fact, we both really needed to make a change. Together, we have lost 150 pounds and our family has a healthy new future.
Live from Haygood Stadium on the campus of Aiken High School, tonight's Gold Gym Game of the Week features the home team, the Aiken High School Fighting Green Hornets, playing host to the Strom Thurmond Rebels from Edgefield County. 2A against 3A as both of these schools, Coach, take a drop down. They used to be 4A and 3A. Aiken now in three. Strom Thurmond back in two. Yeah, and you would expect that uh, those people seeing Strom Thurmond come down to the two level aren't real happy about that. And uh, on the other side of the coin, it's nice to see Aiken drop down, and hopefully they'll have a little bit more success than they've had the last few years. That could be a good thing for them. It is unusual as an alumnus of Aiken High School. Hard to believe that one time I know Aiken was the third largest high school in the state, but uh, not anymore, 3A school. All right, we're ready to get started. Back to kick, number 99, Cole Fell returns for Strom Thurmond to kick. Kick is away and the season is underway at the 10 yard line. Return to the 31 yard line. That's number seven for Aiken High School. That's Brayton Sanders. He'll be one of the tailbacks featured tonight and uh, Aiken's in business. And Brayton Sanders is only a sophomore, but he's got some good size out there. Nice run back to start the ball game. Aiken comes out in a pistol formation. Two men split wide to the left, one to the right. That is Brayton Sanders alone in the backfield behind the quarterback, Bryson Jones. Now brings a man, actually they had two to the right. Now they bring him inside as a blocker and they give to Sanders. Sanders breaks up the middle, breaks a couple of tackles fights hard to the 35 yard line and pick up a four yards. That'll bring up second down and six. And number 74, Chad Stevens came away with the football, but uh, that was after the whistle blew. All right, no huddle. Number eight is Terrell Lewis. He comes in now, sets up the side, gets the handoff. He stopped right at the line of scrimmage. May have picked up a yard. We'll give him one yard. It's going to bring up third down and five. Chandler Talbert, one of the inside linebackers, in on the tackle for Strom Thurmond. Again, the pistol formation, sort of a half wing tee look with wide receivers on both sides. We're seeing this at all levels of football. You saw him just look over to the sideline to get the call. That is Sanders, Sanders who returned over the kick. That's a big run of 10 yards out to the 46 yard line. That's good enough for a first down and Aiken has their first first down of the game. First first down of the season. Looks like they're going to uh, be rotating the two backs. So Lewis back in at the tailback for Sanders after his good run. And Lewis is the senior, Sanders is the Sophomore, but Sanders is a much bigger looking young man out there. Handed off to Lewis and Chandler Talbert. Our first time to call him tonight. He comes through the line of scrimmage, makes a stick in the backfield. That's a name we called last year. Loss of a yard, second down and 11. Two split wide to the left, two to the right. Jones stands up, gets a signal from the sideline. Now back to pass, first pass of the year. Goes up, caught, out of bounds, but not before another first down is picked up. And that looks like Bryson Carolina. And that was a nice throw. Catch. That was right on the money. Nice catch. And that's a Chandler Law Firm first down to the 40 yard line. The second Chandler Law Firm of the season and Aiken into Rebel territory at the 40 yard line. That picked up 14 yards. Now a handoff again to Sanders. Sanders comes straight up the middle, cuts a little to the left, picks up some yardage. It looks like he got three. Maybe close to four. Yeah, got four and down to the 36. Impressive drive so far by Aiken. Look pretty sharp. Came out ready. Aiken wants to prove that they're a much better football team 
much better program than what people saw last year. Three split wide to the left. Another handoff. They keep Sanders in there this time, and he goes right up the middle, and he's stopped right Mike at Sanders the 35-yard line. A pickup of a yard. Bring up third down third and down five. Down. Third down. Jonte Nathaniel, one of the tacklers, along with Jeremy Carroll. Third down and five open. Passing situation, third and five, two to the left, two to the right. Sanders still in there. In motion comes Juwan Brown and now flags. And I think somebody moved too quick there. Yep, procedure against Aiken. That'll be a five yard walk off. Now it'll be third and long, third and 10. Third down and nine, Aiken. Just short of the original line of scrimmage. So that'll bring up third and nine. Number two is Antoine Chandler, actually. That was who goes in motion this time to the left. Under pressure, gonna run. Gets across the 35, 34. He'll be short of a first down, about three yards. They need to make the 30. He actually will have four yards. It'll be fourth and four. And we got a decision to make here, and I think they're gonna go for it, certainly. Four down territory early in the ball game, and this could be a big play for Aiken. They actually give him the 33, so it's fourth down and three. Stop, look to the sideline for the call. Sanders in the backfield next to Jones. Hand it off to him. He goes hard up the middle across the 30 to the 29. He picks up the first down. Aiken High School, their third first down of this drive. A Chandler Law Firm first down. Early in the first quarter of the first ball game of the year, but I'm already very, very impressed with Brayton Sanders. That young man can run the football. First and 10, 29 yard line. Once again, here comes Sanders. Sanders, and they're going to get to the outside, but he no. stopped. Came, made the corner, but he was hit hard. I Sanders. believe that was number seven, Malik Nicholson, Nelson coming up and making the play. Number seven, Malik Nicholson with the stop. Let's second. see who makes second this down. hit. Down. The specs. Did you see that replay? And Malik is one of the leading tacklers coming back from last year. And uh, that's why from his safety position, he had 35, 36 tackles last year. And that was textbook, chest on chest, and he drove that runner back. There's a flag. This is a sideline warning on Aiken High. They've got to stay behind the second line. And if you get a chance to take a shot of that, there's uh, two lines. The coaches can walk in that little alleyway, but the second line sat on the bench with the teams last week, and the team's got to stay behind that. Now Bryson Jones is sacked. In the backfield, going to be a big loss. They wear those jerseys that are tied up behind their back. And say, who is that? I think it was Talbert coming up and making the play for Strom Thurmond. Yeah, I think that was Chandler Talbot. Nice defensive play. Looks like it was a loss of nine yards. Third down and 19. That will slow down this Aiken drive. Look good, if picked up several first downs along the way. Now this pass is short. Do it behind his intended receiver. That was intended for Chin. Rather not Chin because he plays for Strong Thurman. That was Quamaine Sipkins. Yeah, and that was uh, not very well done there. So the Aiken drive stalls fourth down and 19. Jacob Norton on to do the punting for Aiken. They had trouble last year with the snap. Let's see if they've rectified that. This is what a lot of people used to call their Purdue punt formation. Better snap. Good punt. That's it's going to be, be right fine. at the 10-yard line. Calls for a fair catch. It staggers a little bit, but the catch was made. That was number eight, DeAndre Ryan for Strom Thurmond making that catch. And 
Strom Thurmond is in business at the 10 yard line, first and 10. And we'll see Chad Gilchrist behind Tyree Stidham at quarterback for the first time. And we're gonna have a timeout on the field. This is a water break timeout, but we'll call it a Bragg Heating Company timeout. And we'll be right back. Center. Founded in 1963, family owned and operated for 50 years and dedicated to customer service with safety of your family, our top priority. Tyler's Tire is a full service tire retail, tire repair, and automotive repair facility with ASC certified mechanics. Located in two locations, 1019 Richland Avenue West and 1518 Whiskey Road. Let our family take care of yours, Tyler's Tire and Auto Center. A Bragg Heating Company timeout, keeping you comfortable since 1970. We could use Bragg Heating Company to put some cooling in this press box. They take care of my air conditioner at home, <coughs> and I gotta tell you, it's a hot John place Bo right here, but they do a nice job keeping my house cool. John Boyette from the press here, I was trying to get him to be our head fanner, to fan the cool air. There is an air conditioner on the other end. Unfortunately, it doesn't help us down here very much. All right. Here comes Strom Thurmond for the first time, a quarterback keeper Number right two. up the middle. Looks like he gained a yard. Did Stidham no give him a yard and make that second down and nine. And Trayvon Simpkins, one of the tacklers for Aiken. Not much of a gain right there. Three wide to the left. Gilchrist, a fine running back set up, and you can tell the difference by looking at him how much size he has on the quarterback. Stood him a, a slight quarterback, and now he hands off to Gilchrist, and here he comes to the right. Aiken was yeah, ready for him, puts him down. No gain, yeah, bring up third and nine. Yeah, yeah. Bryson Carolina, a junior. Third down. We saw Bryson third make down. a good catch and for a first down in that opening drive. Aiken had three first downs, but were stopped. Got sacked, what big loss, but a good punt has Strom Thurman backed up. So third nine, gonna roll to his left. Throws it outside, makes a catch, makes a nice move, gonna pick up the first down out that's to the 24 point. yard line. And that's number 10, Malik Seven. Hawthorne. Seven. No, excuse me, wrong roster. Paget uh, Sumner contact. made the catch. Patrick moves it up to the 24 yard line. That's a pickup of 13 yards and a first down for the Rebels. And Stidham, a left-handed quarterback, they put some of their better offensive, more experienced offensive linemen to the left to protect him when he's rolling out. Much easier throw going that way than if he was running to his right. Fakes to Gilchrist, rolls to his right this time. Makes the pass over to number pass eight. To to number, eight Ryan. number eight is DeAndre Ryan. Ryan brought down fairly Second quickly down. after a short game. And that was a nice throw by Stidham. Second down is five. Picked up more than I thought, five yards. Second down and five. Got a little room to breathe now with that nice pass for the first down. Here comes Gilchrist. Aiken stuffs him right up the middle. Don't know that he gained anything on that. Made the 30 yard line. They may move it a hair. We'll call it third down and four. This will give him a yard on that carry. And and Aiken, Aiken line looking good so far. Yeah, and they got some big people out there. Austin Schofield goes about 300 pounds. He's right in the middle of that defensive line. They haven't had any success running up there yet. He comes out to take a breather. Now here comes a sweep. Tried to get outside to Ryan. Ryan's caught. He's going to be tackled. First was caught up by number 22. That's Brandon Wilson. Okay, with Ryan. Got Wilson made a good play, hung on. He got some help, Coach. He sure did. And taking Third a look down. at these two teams out Fourth there on down. the field, just by appearance, now it looks like Aiken's the bigger third. team size-wise. That may play an important role here tonight. Nice play as we see it on the Specs Vision Center. Did you see that replay? All right, Cole Fell comes out. He does the kickoffs, does the place kicking, and he does the punting for Strom Thurmond. Strom Thurmond has a history of really good kickers. And fell the latest in a long line. Oh, and there's that trouble. Goes over his head. That's in the end zone. 
He's going to try to pick it up. He's going to run out of the back of the end zone. Probably the smart thing to do. That's going to be a safety. Aiken puts the first points of the season on the board. Two to nothing. They lead over Strom Thurmond. And we talked earlier last year, Aiken had a lot of trouble with the punt snaps. This year, they get a little one coming back for them. They're also going to get the ball, certainly. So things are going Aiken's way so far in this ball game. That's a, a break here in the early action for Aiken. And uh, Aiken, like you say, it, it seems like over the past few years of doing Aiken high football, we've seen it. Here's the Specs replay of that botched punt. And Fell had no chance, and uh, that was a smart move. Had to give up two. Well, if he punts it and he gets it out of the end zone, it probably ends up somewhere inside of a 20 for sure, maybe even worse than that, inside the five, and an easy touchdown for Aiken. Yeah, and I'm not even so sure he would have got the punt off because he was running with his back to the uh, line of scrimmage so that he had to turn around, and I, I think it would have been blocked. So so Fell did a good tackled. job. <laughs> well, the, the best thing he did was pick it up and just step out of the end zone. That's right. How many punters have we seen get hurt picking that up and trying to turn around and pivot and get knocked completely off their rocker and hurt an ankle, hurt a knee? So here's Fell. This time he'll just kick off again, this time from the 20 yard line. Sanders is deep again. High kick, Sanders feels on the 28 yard line, brings it up to the 40. Hit hard and now brought down at the 42 yard line. Sanders on the turn. So Aiken gets a break, gets two points on the board, leads two to nothing over the Rebels of Strom Thurmond. They're gonna mark him at the 41. Good effort by Brayton Sanders again. He got stood up, but he bounced right off of it. The whistle blew, calling the play dead. But they did not take him down. Turns around, hands it to Sanders again in the backfield. This time he's caught. Gets away for a second, but only able to get back to the original line of scrimmage. No gain, second down and 10. Last that time the war up front was won by Strom Thurman. They were much quicker at off the ball than Aiken Carson was. And 32 Cal, Kurt Ackler's fourth down, second down 10. Sanders out, Lewis in. Juwan Brown as well in at wide receiver in the slot. He goes in motion, takes the handoff. Going to try to get outside, look for a hole. He gets inside, ducks his head, gets to the 43, maybe the 44 yard line. So it'll be a pickup of three yards, third down and seven. And Montrez Coleman, number 33, one of the captains for Strom Thurman tonight, makes that tackle. Third down, third and seven. Quick snap, right up the middle, tried to get Strom maybe leaning a little bit, but Strom was ready for that. And Richard, as he makes the 46, down, picks up two down. yards, it's gonna bring up fourth down and five third yards. Stop Coleman. And the punt unit will be on again that quickly. So Aiken unable to capitalize with an offensive drive after the safety, still has the lead two to nothing over Strong. Stay tuned at the end of tonight's game, we'll have the Center for Dentistry MVP as chosen by our group of distinguished pickers. We got a timeout on the field. That's a brag. Heating company timeout. We'll take a break and be right back. Well, was a break in the action. Take time to visit the Aiken High School All Sports Booster Club concession stand. All right, we're going to stay here. The one ahead. 110 left to go in the first quarter. Concession stand, including ice cold bottle water, as well as selection of Hornet memorabilia at the Hornet. Jacob Norton going back to punt again for the Hornets, and so far with this hurry-up offense that Aiken's running, I think they're doing a pretty nice job. Of. Had a nice opening drive. Yeah. Stall didn't get very far in the second. Let's see what kind of punt. Got a really good punt their last time out. Had better field position. 
that's not so good. A wobbly kick to the left, going to kick and go out of bounds. Left kick out of bounds. And that'll be about a 25-yard punt as it's marked at the 29-yard line. And our pitch will spot it closer to 27. We're going to walk it back to the 27-yard line. So it'll be a 27-yard punt where Strong will take over with just over a minute left to go in the first quarter here tonight at Haygood Stadium. Two to nothing, Aiken leads over Strong. Good and bad about that punt, no return. And now we got movement. Yes, Flag on the, the front. Sideline. Movement. They lined up with Long two backs line. on either side of Stidham. Procedure. Yes, Number five is uh, Dion Chen. And then he five moved forward, and that off. seemed to throw people off. So it's going to be a five yard walk off. Against Strom, first and 15. Now there's going to be another five-yard walk-off. Strong a little bit. We have Tyree Nick split wide to the left. He took off. Procedure, five, five, five yard penalty. And those are the kind First that drive you crazy. 20. He's 25 yards away from the ball most, and uh, no reason for him to break early. Now he was fooled by the uh, the false count, and when Stidham stood up to look to the sideline, he took off. So now, first down, 20 yards. And here's Gilcrest coming up the middle. Breaks a couple of tackles, almost yes, steps out of it. Aiken it holds on, knocks him down to the 21-yard line. line. Looks like he picked up about five yards. Well, Lewis, number eight. That'll bring up second down, 15. 11, Coach Ackworth for the Hornets. Second down, 15, Strong Thurman. Now, looks up. Nobody moves this time. He took his step, but it was backwards this time. He's allowed to do that. He's going to hand off his chin. Chin gets into the open. And he's going to be tackled, but not before he picks up the first down, crosses the 40 to the 41-yard line. Big pickup of 17 yards. Bryson Carolina and Brandon Wilson in on a tackle. That's the first time we've seen Chin, I believe, carry the football, and uh, nice run on his part. Uh, I think everyone's keying on Gilcrest, and lo and behold, that's something that we've seen Strom do over the years. They've had some really good running backs, but they always have two or three that you never know which one's going to be carrying the ball. You can't key on one. And that's going to be the end of the first quarter. They'll swap sides of the field. One quarter in the book. Aiken leads Strom Thurman two to nothing in the Gold's Gym Game of the Week. We'll be right back. You can smile. I love to smile. I was so pleased that I could get all of my dentistry work done in just one visit. You can smile. Painless, that's how I would describe it. Here at the Center for Dentistry, it has been a wonderful experience. With the comprehensive nature of this office, this one office, I can bring my family here and we can have it all done at one place. You can smile. Center for Dentistry, 1391 Silver Bluff Road, Aiken. We're back, ready to start the second quarter. Before we do, let's go down to the sideline for a Holly Tractor sideline report with Noah Fight. What you got, Noah? Thanks, Ed. Uh, got a couple of early scores from around the area. Uh, not a big surprise, but maybe uh, and the, the, the score is uh, Dreer is beating Fox Creek. They're currently up 21-0. North Augusta, uh, a little more low score, and they're beating Lakeside 3-0. And Abbeville has an early 7-0 lead over uh, Silver Bluff. That's it for right now. Back to you guys upstairs. Thank you, Noah. The Holly Tractor Sideline Report. Here we go again, Stenham going downfield. He's got Gilcrest on the wheel route and he's down the field for a big game. Knocked out of bounds about the 15, just short of the 15 yard line. And that ball's perfectly thrown and he threw it to a great receiver. We talk about him all the time as a running back, but he's just a great athlete. Here comes the Specs Vision Center replay. Great drop back this time and he's got plenty of time to throw the football. 
Nice tackle down there to save the touchdown by Devontae Gators. Here's Dion. Chin again on the run. He breaks up the middle. Picks up about five. Second down and five. 23. Two to nothing, Aiken leads, but Strom is threatening as they're down to the 12-yard line. Hands off. This is Gilchrist trying to get outside, and there's a flag. I believe we'll have a holding call. Knocked down inside the 10 at the 9, but let's... Let's see what the call is. That's good pursuit by the entire left side of the Aiken defense. Holding was the call. So far, Strom Thurman's had no success running up the middle. Uh, they got a pretty stout front four up there on defense. Colin Flanders, Austin Schofield, Jalen Dugar, and Jermaine Garrett. Really done a nice job so far between the tackles for Aiken. Had some success now throwing the football and trying to get outside. 10 yard walk off. We'll bring it back 15. to the 20 yard line. So it'll bring up second down and 13. Stidham brings a man in motion. It's Ryan, he gets outside, missed tackle, but dragged down very quickly before he gets the turn. Looks like he got back to the original line of scrimmage to the 17, perhaps. Pick up a three, bring up third and long. Very nice open field tackle by Trayvon Simpkins that time. Get a little jet sweep action going on that. It's very similar looking to what Auburn runs in terms of their setup. Rolling to the right, looking down in the middle, throws it high. Bounces harmlessly in the end zone. That could have been picked off as it was tipped. Intended for number 23, Garrett Gibson. That's a tough throw. Okay, he's coming, rolling to his right and trying to throw it back over the middle, basically, and hard to do. I believe they'll bring Cole Fell out, see if they can take the lead. That is what they show. Cole Fell and comes the out. Field from the, the holder will be the quarterback, Tyrese Didman. So five. you never know what's up when you got a quarterback holding. 35. And we're going to have a timeout. Bragg Heating Company timeout, I believe. Yep, they're going out on the field. We'll take a timeout with them. We'll be right back with the Gold's Gym Game of the Week. From our Looney Tunes Savings Club that teaches young people their first lessons about managing money to free financial counseling services for adults, Security Federal Bank grows with our customers and has a service to meet every need. Established right here in Aiken County in 1922, we continue to be your hometown bank. We always work to meet the changing needs of our customers. That's why we've become a company that can meet every need for financial services. From online banking, bill pay, mortgage products, trusts, and a full line of insurance products. If we were you, we'd bank with us. Welcome back. Security Federal, our scoreboard sponsor. It is two to nothing. Aiken leads. However, Strom going to try to do something about that after this Bragg Heating Company timeout. 35 yarder coming. Again, Fold, Cole, a very, Cole fell, a very good kicker. The kick is up. It is. No good. We got a penalty, and it may be roughing the kicker. It is against Aiken, roughing the kicker, and that's going to be an automatic first down. So Strom catches a big break. And let's look at the Specs Vision Center. Did you see that replay? Oh, yeah, no question about that. That's not even close. Yeah, personal foul. 
the distance to go. Brings it inside the 10. It's an automatic first down at the nine. Four strong. So Strom will go for the touchdown instead of the field goal. The defender had uh, great penetration, but he yeah, had a bad angle. Now that's something we saw last year a lot. As Hammond used to keep the ball, Javier Hammond on the keeper was a major, major weapon for Strom Thurmond. That's the first time we've seen Stedman, Stedman keep it. Second down. He picks up a couple of yards. Six. He's at the six yard line, so it's going to be second and goal from the six. Now he's going to roll to his left, and he's swarmed by Aiken High. Don't think Got he him. made it past the original line of scrimmage there. Trayvon Simpkins again. He's been all Got over the field defensively so far tonight. Very, very good tackle. Third down goal. And Stidham, they love his leadership. Okay, he's done a nice job Second so far five. throwing the football also. But I don't think he's the running threat that Hammond was. Just doesn't have the uh, physique. So Stidman, third down, six, goal to go. Brings a man in motion, drops back, looking, looking under a lot of pressure, gets away, still being chased by Sanders. He's not going to make it. He's pushed out of bounds. Got inside the five, it looked like. They're going to mark him at the four-yard line where it'll be up fourth and goal at the four-yard line. That's a good effort by Stedham there. Stedham was being chased by Sanders, who's the running back. For and Brayton Sanders yeah. has been impressive so far. <laughs> I've said this a couple times already, but he's only a sophomore, and he's playing both ways, offensively and defensively. And uh, he's got a motor on him. He just keeps coming. So Colfell will get a second chance at the field goal, this time a little bit closer. He'll lay it at the 12-yard line. It'll be a 22-yard field goal. Let's watch number seven, see if he gets penetration this time. Snap, <laughs> kick is down, and it is good. So and on the Security Federal good. Scoreboard, Strom Thurman the takes the lead three. three to two here in the Goals Gym Game of the Week. We'll take a break and be right back. Were well, you hurt on the job? Are you trying to keep your work comp payments? Do you feel like no one is listening? Your employer, the company doctor, the insurance company? Well, we're listening. We have a team dedicated exclusively to helping people hurt on the job. Our workers' compensation team has helped hundreds of injured South Carolinians. Call us now and let us listen to you. For a legal consultation, contact the ChandlerLawFirm.com. You can count on Chandler. Welcome back, Haygood Stadium, Strom gets the Cole Fell 22 yard field goal to take the lead three to two over Aiken High. And the good news on the Aiken Regional Medical Center injury report, we have no injuries to report. Nobody's down yet. No, no cramps. Well, I'm gonna get myself in trouble here. This is almost like a baseball score, three to two. It's, it's kind of like the Nationals three and the Braves two. Something like that, you know what I mean? No, the Braves <laughs> usually had their way with the Nationals, but the Nationals win everything else three to two. <laughs> Oh, I, I wondered when we'd get our first Nationals coming. <laughs> yeah. All right, here's the kickoff. And here's Sanders taking it at the eight-yard line. He's going to make it back to the 20. And Aiken will take over there first and 10. That's their worst starting field position of the night. And once again, Montrez Coleman in there, one of the initial tacklers. A lot of people, nowhere for Sanders to run that time. Had him corralled. I think Lewis will come in and take the first snap. Chandler Law Firm, first and 10 at the 20 yard line. Making slow getting all the players out there. Hand off up the middle. That was very slow looking developing. Back to the original line of scrimmage, second down and 10. And I think what we're seeing 
in the war up front when Aiken has the ball. They've got the bigger size. Take a look at their Austin Schofield, number 75. He's, he's a head taller than most of the guys out there. He goes about 300 pounds. Strom Thurman has to rely on their quickness, and they did on that play. Yeah, the quickness really shows up for Strom. Fakes now under pressure and going to go down. And there's the quickness okay. as they get around the offensive Bryce lineman Jones. and get back in the Jack backfield. Bryce. Bryson Jones, nowhere he could go with it throwing wise or running wise. Rashad Lott and Will Cheatham. Cheatham in on that sack. Third down, third and 13. Three yard loss, third in 13. Hey, that was flat out. Aiken with that two split wide out. to the left, two to the right. Same formation they've used most of the night. Lewis in the backfield with Jones. Changes sides now, quick pass. Going down the sidelines, got a man out there, makes the catch and goes out of bounds. And I believe that's number nine, Devontae Gators. Gators. First time we've called his name tonight. Another player that we've seen in the past. Big play there. And a little play fake here and uh, well thrown. Jones Specs. is doing a nice job out there. Specs vision replay. Did you see that replay? Pick up of 18 yards to the 38 yard line. Actually give him, he was lacking three on that. So that's 21 yards. Big play for Aiken High. Chandler Law Firm first down. Now quick pass again on that side and hit hard. There's a flag down on the field. That came out before the hit. I don't think it was an interference call. Maybe not, holding. I'm not sure what they're going to call there. Pass interference. They do call pass interference. I think it's probably more of the uh, pass interference before that hit at the end. Let's look at the specs. Target is Carolina again. First down. I'm not, I'm not sure about that. Down, down, down. At any rate, that gives them another Chandler Law Firm. First down there in Rebel territory is Aiken at the 46 yard line. First and 10. Handoff going nowhere. Hit right as he hits the line of scrimmage. He may have lost a yard. And that was Sanders again. Sanders at the line of scrimmage. I think they're going to give us forward progress to the line of scrimmage. Back to the 46 yard line. Second down and 10. That was Jaquan Edwards, inside linebacker, who's a Second freshman among the tacklers. Got some help from Rashad Lott. A man in motion, hands off. Downhill. Trying the jet sweep, and that's going nowhere. That loses a yard. Who's number 11, Carolina. Bryson Carolina? Seeing if he could find a lane to run Carolina. through. He could not. Brings up third and 11. And Montrez Coleman again, the initial hit. Third down. I think Sanders was trying to get a little uh, breather out there. He's not going to get it on this play. Rolls to his right. Now going to come back to his left. Looking, looking, throws. Got a man. Makes a catch. Runs up the tightrope on the sidelines. Gets inside the 20 to the 30 and to the 27 yard line. Quamain Simpkins on the reception, and it just took too long. They couldn't cover him that long. Good protection back there, and then he rolled away from the pressure and found a wide open man. So Aiken picks up another Chandler Law Firm first down and is in business. A couple of these Aiken receivers have some height on them. And Bryson Jones, as you pointed out, making some good passes. And off right up the middle. They're not finding much. Here comes a flag late. Strom Thurman says they've recovered a fumble, but. And they're running off the field like they did get it. Well, I saw a beanbag come in, so yep, there you go. Referee says it does go the other way. He threw the flag. So you got to think that it's going to go against Aiken. 
Yep, he's calling it a first down. I guess he was throwing a bean bag. Yeah, he was throwing the bean. Yeah, that's right. That was the bean bag to show where the ball was. Or. That's a big break. So Strom with 5.43 left to go here in the second quarter. Gets the ball on the 25 yard line. And there's going to be a timeout, a brag. Heating Company timeout on the field for water. We'll get some water with them. We'll be right back. Pruitt Health is here to help. For more than four decades, Pruitt Health has partnered with healthcare professionals to deliver exceptional care to families across the Southeast. Since the beginning, our focus has always been on quality, quality programs, quality services, and quality people. Looking forward to the future, we've developed an innovative model of care to provide comprehensive, streamlined solutions. Get well for life with Pruitt Health. All right, the Bragg Heating Company timeout. Keeping you comfortable since 1970 here in the surrounding communities. Here comes Strom Thurmond, first and 10, Chandler Law from first down, and Stidman's in the open. As we said, we used to see this kind of play from their quarterback last year. There is a There's flag, and that's going to come back, I'm quite certain. Gets it all the way down to the 37-yard line. It is against Strong. Marked down at the line of scrimmage, so they'll walk it back. But Stidman looked good on that one. He sure did. At 25. That one's coming back. Again, Javier Hammond used to run that kind of thing. Drive defense is crazy. Not quite as quick and strong. He's holding the call against Strong. That's a 10 yard walk off. So that's a big one. First and 20. As we get a look at. Yeah, it looked like there was holding on the outside there. Aiken gets the break on that penalty, backs him up. Now, hands off, fakes the throw over here to the right. Short game. Israel Talbert in. at that time yeah, running the football. That's Talbert. First time we've seen Talbert run into football for sure. Well, he Henry usually plays defense. 12, Simpkins, and they had a bit of a hole, Sanders, same place that they uh, ran the previous play. Down, Closed 13, a little 13, quicker there. Picked up seven yards, better game than one might have thought. Here comes Talbert again, and he breaks the tackle. He's in the clear. He crosses the 50-yard line down to the 40. One man to beat. Runs him out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Six, big Talbert. pickup. Talbert, two runs, two big plays. And Jalen Smith saved the touchdown, and it looks like Strom Thurmond found something off the uh, left tackle side. 45-yard run by Talbert. Added with seven, he just picked up 52 yards quickly for Storm Thurman. They've run that same hole three plays in a row, all of them with success. Now Chin and Gilchrist in the backfield again. And a handoff to Gilchrist. Aiken gets him right up around the line of scrimmage. He passes that, and he's going to pick up a few yards. He's one of those big running backs that just picks up more yards than you think. I think he's picked up five yards on Tackle man by Fuel, 60. We'll second give him four, hand. second down and six. Tried to come back with a little counter action. Fake the play to the left and come back. Right up the middle. Being dragged from behind, but still picks up some yardage to Stidman. Inside the He's going to be just short of the first down to bring up third and short. This Kevin looks a little bit more like Strom Thurmond than we're used to. They're coming off the ball pretty well up front. Third down. Third down and two. It's a short two. There's your time officials are Calling a timeout, officials timeout. I'm not sure they're sending someone from Aiken to the sidelines. I imagine that has something to do with equipment or 
Might even be a third down and hot, two overheated down. injury. We'll call that the Aiken Regional Medical Center injury report. As Simpkins had to come to the sidelines, maybe get some water, cool off. It is hot. It's hot in his press box. Here comes the quarterback Stidman around the right side. Going to pick up the first down and get down to the 10. Number 10. Right at the 10-yard line. Touchdown it'll be first Thurman. and goal. Tackle made by the Hornets. Torrell Simpkins. And suddenly Strom having their way. And I'm not sure if this is going to happen, and it may already be happening, but they do have nobody going both ways, and some of those big guys up front for Aiken are playing both ways, and the heat could be getting to them a little bit. They Strom Thurmond has certainly been coming off the ball better in this drive. They do look a bit winded. 12-yard gain on that. Here comes Gilchrist up the middle. So far, they've handled Gilchrist for the most part. That's not who's hurting them. Flanders, number Talbert 33, picked up 52 eight yards, and that one. hurt. And Stidman on this drive has picked up some good yardage. Colin Flanders, sophomore defensive yeah, lineman, was in there line. that time, helping to make the tackle on Gilchrist. But he has not gotten free very often tonight. Second and goal at the six-yard line. Once again, here comes Gilchrist right up the middle. They spin him inside the five to the four. Pick up a couple more yards. Third down and four yards two. to go. Maybe three yard line. Third down and goal. Clock ticks. 2.30 left to go here in the second quarter. Now Stidman stands up, looks to the sidelines to get the call. Gilchrist going to change sides. Going to take a fake. Now rolls to his right. Looks, looks, looking to run. That's a nice read and that he time. he gets into the end Beautiful. zone for a touchdown. Waited, 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 and finally found his hole and went for it and dives it in to the end zone. The final four yards. Strom goes up 9-2 to two over Aiken. And that's a nice play by Stidham. Uh, that's a big-time play right there. Bought Not some time and... Uh, Sees the hole, takes it into the end zone. Not really sure that he was looking to pass as much as he was looking for that hole. He found it. Now he goes back to holding duty. Snap, kick, and good. And our score in the Goals Gym game of the week. Strom Thurman 10, Aiken 2. We'll be right back. What a crowd we have on hand tonight. And last before kickoff, here comes the game ball. Set to be brought in from the sky by a parachute. The crowd has spotted him as he comes in for a landing. Oh, that's going to hurt. From orthopedics to neurology, imaging to pain management, or even if a good idea just turns into an accident, CMI can help you play again. Learn more at CMI.md. Strom Thurman races down the field in three minutes, just a hair under three minutes and score to make this score 10 to two. Strom Thurman beating the host Aiken High School Green Hornets 10 to 2. We're ready for the kickoff, and this kickoff is brought to you by CMI. CMI helping teams so that they can play again is the sponsor of our kickoffs. And the CMI kickoff is away, and again, it's going to be Sanders fielding it inside the 10. Turns, he's got a little hole, gets away, breaks the tackle, gets over to 30. Good return to the 31-yard line. Aiken will have a minute and 58 Seven seconds to get down and see if they can maybe go for two and tie the game up. That was a nice kick, but uh, much better blocking that time by Aiken on the return. Sanders brings it all the way out to the 30. Nicely done. Stay tuned at the end of our game where we'll be naming the Center for Dentistry MVP. Don't want to go away. Looks like a good catch 
Nice throw and catch. Put it where nobody else could catch it. And number two, Antoine Chandler makes the catch from Bryson Jones. There is a flag, it looks like it's roughing against Storm Thurman. So that's gonna tack on another 15 yards. Here's the, here's the walk off, 15 yards, late hit. So Aiken finds themselves right down at the 32 yard line. First and 10, a Chandler off on first down. They're in business. Now uh, whistle, don't see flags. Well, here comes a flag. Delay of the game by Aiken. Whoa. Not exactly sure. I, I don't know how that, I, I don't know how that could be. Maybe uh, they snapped it before the ball. They put the ball in play. I'm not sure what they did. Brian Neal isn't happy on the sidelines. I'm sure he's not. First and 15. Two split wide left, two to the right. Sanders in the backfield next to Bryson Jones. Jones has gone the whole way at quarterback. Done a pretty good job. Now loses the snap, picks it back up though. He's gonna roll to his right, got some time. Throws it downfield, has a man is tipped. And here comes a flag. This probably will be an interference. And Bryce in Carolina is a pretty nice target. I don't have his height here in our program, but I, he's got to be at least 6'2", maybe 6'3". Interference is the call against Strong. Maybe we'll more. Let's take a look at that on the Specs replay. Contact made while the ball is in the air. And Jones does a nice job here. That's a little bit of a low snap. Keeps his composure. And he's throwing off balance and still has something on that. 22 yard line, Thurman, first and 10. All right, the ball is marked at the 22 yard line. So Aiken, first and 15 gets the interference call. Now back to first and 10. Sanders on the handoff. Looks for room to run, finds a hole, digs through it. Passes the 20 down to the 17, pick up about five yards. Comes up second down and well, we'll give him four yards. Second down to six. 123 left to go on the clock. They've got some timeouts left, we know that. So they've got enough time. They're taking one now. And they're gonna take a Bragg Heating Company timeout. We'll keep it here, if that's okay with the guys in the truck. And uh, pretty decent game so far. Yeah, and a couple breaks now went the Aiken's way. They, they had some bad breaks earlier in the ball game, but Pass interference call here, helped them a little bit, and they're on the move. How important do you think it is that Aiken put some points, do something positive right here? They've looked a little bit winded there on that last drive. Strom Thurman was having their way. Uh, how important do you think it is that they put some points on here? Well, I, I think it is important because Strom Thurman's going to get the football to start the second half. And one of the things that uh, Brian Neal has to overcome is uh, they've got to win early. Okay, They've got to do some positive things early. All right, we've got a Holly sideline tractor report from Noah Fight. Noah, what you got? Uh, some more updates. Uh, Dreer continues to pour it on Fox Creek, 34-0. North Augusta pulling away a little bit. They're up 9-0 over Lakeside. Abbeville leads Silver Bluff 14-0. And it's scoreless between uh, Bamberg Earhart and Wilson Elko, 0-0. Back to you. Thank you, Noah. That is quick and precise and to the point. We return to the field, and Sanders gets the handoff right up the middle. Clock runs. We'll get it down to less than a minute. Short game is going to bring up third down and four. And Coleman has been all over the field defensively for Strom Thurmond so far tonight. Makes another tackle from his inside linebacker position. We'll call it a long three. Fakes the handoff, goes outside, makes the catch, slides down. Here comes a flag, though. And that might give Aiken a break if it goes against Strom Thurman. That stops the clock, if nothing else. And they will talk about it. Holding against Aiken. It goes against Aiken, so it is not a break for Aiken. Antoine Chandler made the catch, but he slipped down, actually lost maybe some yardage on that. We'll see. If it bring a fourth down, Strom, what do you do, coach? 
I think they're going to take the penalty. Aiken has their offense on the field to go for it, so it looks like they are going to take the penalty. They listen to the coach. Holding will be a walk-off of 10 yards, so it will remain third, third down, down, third down in 13, and we got the Specs replay. And we can look for the holding. That's going to be the man on the wide. Right yeah, there. Yeah, he held. Now we got a quick timeout here on the sidelines. It's going to be another Bragg Heating Company timeout. We'll take it with them. We'll be right back. Since 1948, Holly Tractor has been Aiken's place for farm equipment, implements, accessories, and supplies. But did you know that Holly is your place for home yard equipment too? Riding and push mowers, weed eaters, chainsaws, and brands including Kubota, Husqvarna, and still equipment you can depend on. Come inside and see our expanded showroom. Holly is the exclusive dealer for Yeti coolers and now carry Generac generators. Holly Tractor, 1721 Richland Avenue East. All right, Holly Tractor, our sideline report sponsor gets us through the timeout the Bragg heating company timeout and again I would give anything for them to show up and keep us comfortable in this booth <laughs> I should have called them today Whew. it's cooling down a little bit it ain't as bad as when it started we shut the door and the air conditioners trickling this way I think it's set up for the other side of the booth though all right third okay. down 13 Aiken Takes the time out to talk about it. Rolling to his left, looking downfield, going to throw. Has a man out there, intercepted. No. Oh, he caught it, touched yes, it. Touchdown. Chandler came up with it. We'll have to look at that on the Specs replay. It looked like Strom had it. Chandler fights it away for the touchdown. Let's see if Aiken goes for two for the tie. Now this is impressive by Jones, okay? He's rolling to his left. He's under some pressure now. Squares up, lobs it up, and uh, Chandler just fights off two defenders, makes the catch. That's a great play for Aiken. Now Aiken going to take a timeout. We'll keep it right here with the Bragg Heating Company timeout. And uh, that just goes to show that that was a pretty good pass, a great catch, and the, the difference between a great play and a really poor play. It's just a hair. I could have sworn Strom was going to have that. Well, he was double covered, both of them there, and I think they were both a little taller than the uh, receiver, but he came up with the football. That's all that counts. I think you might have been right to it. I think they're going to go for two. Why not? They lined up for the kick, but I think at some point they realized we've got a timeout. Let's talk about it. Yeah. By the way, there's 31.5 seconds left, so Strom will have a little bit of time if they want to try to get something started after this point after try. And I think this is the right call. They're still within a field goal, if, even if they don't make this. Well, points are probably going to be at a premium. They're going for it. Sanders takes it up oh, the yeah. middle, hauls into the end zone, touchdown. Aiken High ties it up with a two-point conversion here with 31 seconds to go in the first half. 10-10 to 10 is our score on the Security Federal scoreboard. And uh, don't know that we thought that we saw that coming, Coach. Hey, and you asked how important it was for them to score. Well, we couldn't be sure beforehand, but look at the excitement they've generated now. Not only the players, but their fans. Okay, and they'll be doing some push-ups down here on the track. That's a tradition here. Okay, guys will get a little stronger that are watching the game too. That's huge, and that was a nice run by Sanders once again. And we hadn't even mentioned the crowd. Good crowd on hand. Strom travels real well as we watch the two-point conversion again. And that's. That's a nice hole. He, he finds it, takes his time, makes a nice read, cuts it right up the field. That's a big play also. Moves his legs and keeps pushing into the end zone. As I was saying, Strom travels well. The whole visitor side is full. Got people lined up on the fence over there on the Strom side and the Aiken side looking pretty full, much fuller than the last time we were here. So nice crowd, hot weather, but football is in the air and both of these sides, uh, I think, we're expecting something good to happen, and so far, both sides have seen good things. One of the most exciting players we saw last year was Denard Spann from right here at Aiken, and uh, I tell you what, this uh, Sanders kid is going to be quite a ball player. He can play on both sides of the field, and uh, so far, he's been outstanding tonight. 
All right, here's our CMI kickoff. CMI getting teams back in the game so they can play again. Here they come, Strom Thurmond trying to get some field position and do some damage. Look and out. into the open. Only one man to beat, and he beats him. Turns it inside, so Strom doesn't need the full 31 seconds. They're going to go the distance for a touchdown. Here comes a flag mm -hmm. late. The Aiken High bench was jumping up and down on the clip. There was a push in the back coming down the field that was way behind the play, and they caught it. Personal foul, block in the back, clip, whatever way you want to look at it. They're going to walk it all the way back. Strong's touchdown is off the board, and what's worse is they used half the clock, 14.9. We'll have to look at the replay and see if the replay can catch it from behind. The specs, did you see that replay? DeAndre Ryan is their return specialist this year for Strom Thurmond. Outstanding run, obviously. Takes it all the way, reads his blocks very well there. Makes a couple nice breaks. Let's see if we can pick up the clip. It's behind him, way behind him, right around in there. No. Not going to be able to. Oh, oh there he goes. Oh, that, that is, uh, oh, and coaches, I can't tell you how many times we tell you, if the runner's in front of you, don't, do not block. Don't run right. into anybody. Don't Even, run. Oh, my you goodness. may have just run into him. And, yeah, it wasn't a vicious block by any means, but uh, how costly is that? Wow. So 14.9 seconds, ball spotted at the 40-yard line. Strom going to try to make something out of this. Quickly throws out. Stays in bounds. I think Strom has some timeouts to burn. They pick up the first down. Strom going to use a timeout. 7.8 seconds left to go. Jermaine Garrett, one of the big defensive linemen, helps to make that tackle on the short pass. It's a good hustle. Down the first time okay, and Terrell Lewis got caught up in that tackle also, and uh, he is down. So we've got a player down on the field. Uh, injury timeout, the Aiken Regional Medical Center. Injury timeout, and that may be our first cramper of the evening as he's back up. Lewis goes both ways. He's one of the tailbacks who splits times with Sanders, and he also plays linebacker on defense. I believe it's linebacker. And everybody's smiling, so it can't be very serious. First down and 10, Thurman. Both teams are now out of timeout. So that injury timeout does not look serious. Doesn't look like he's going to have to make the trip over to Aiken Regional Medical Center, which I'm sure the folks at Aiken Regional Medical Center are happy about that. From the way he's responding, I think he had the wind knocked out of him. Yes, they have him listed as the starting inside linebacker. So Strom, just under eight seconds, first and 10, inside the 30-yard line, rolling to his right, looking downfield, throws it, throws it out of bounds, stops yeah, the clock uh, with 2.7 seconds. So we've got time for one more play. No so, fight would have had that one, except he had a clipboard in his hands. Okay, that hit him right in the uh, hands. Uh, hey, he, he made a nice move to <laughs> get out of the way of it. I know from last week at the Jamboree, I had several instances holding the camera where I panicked and headed out before it was time. <laughs> All right, second, second down, 10, but this will be the last play of the half. Three split wide to the right, one to the left. Looks back. Over to his left, throws it in the middle, over everybody's yeah, head. Incomplete. incomplete. That'll do it for the first half. What a first half we had here. Lots of excitement in our first goals gym game of the week. Now they've got a few players out there in the middle of the crowd, and they get them out of the way. Coaches come out there screaming at the Aiken players to stop it, and they head up the tunnels together. And a good first half, 10 to 10. Couldn't ask for much more of an exciting game from our perspective. I'll tell you what, it's been a good football game so far. Both teams have done some good things. Uh, hasn't been an outstanding performance by some of the guys that we thought might uh, dominate this game. But so far, I've been very impressed by uh, Aiken. I 
Okay, they seem yeah, like a much better football team this year than they were last year. Absolutely. Strom Thurmond, pretty much what we expected, running the football, did real well in the second quarter on that one drive. And uh, Aiken, able to respond to that, get down the field, got some nice calls to help him out, and a really nice play on the touchdown. So we're tied 10-10 to 10 at the half. We're going to take a break. When we come back, the Aiken High School Fighting Green Hornets Marching band will be on the field to entertain us when we return on the Gold's Gym Game of the Week. Tyler's Tire and Auto Center, founded in 1963, family owned and operated for 50 years and dedicated to customer service with safety of your family, our top priority. Tyler's Tire is a full service tire retail, tire repair, and automotive repair facility with ASC certified mechanics. Located in two locations, 1019 Richland Avenue West and 1518 Whiskey Road. Let our family take care of yours, Tyler's Tire and Auto Center. You can smile. I love to smile. I was so pleased that I could get all of my dentistry work done in just one visit. You can smile. Painless. That's how I would describe it. Here at the Center for Dentistry, it has been a wonderful experience. With the comprehensive nature of this office, this one office, I can bring my family here and we can have it all done at one place. You can smile. Center for Dentistry, 1391 Silver Bluff Road, Aiken. From our Looney Tunes Savings Club that teaches young people their first lessons about managing money to free financial counseling services for adults, Security Federal Bank grows with our customers and has a service to meet every need. Established right here in Aiken County in 1922, we continue to be your hometown bank. We always work to meet the changing needs of our customers. That's why we've become a company that can meet every need for financial services. From online banking, bill pay, mortgage products, trusts, and a full line of insurance products. If we were you, we'd bank with us. Were you hurt on the job? Are you trying to keep your work comp payments? Do you feel like no one is listening? Your employer, the company doctor, the insurance company? Well, we're listening. We have a team dedicated exclusively to helping people hurt on the job. Our workers' compensation team has helped hundreds of injured South Carolinians. Call us now and let us listen to you. For a legal consultation, contact the ChandlerLawFirm.com. You can count on Chandler. Welcome back. We're at halftime of the Gold's Gym Game of the Week, where we are tied 10 to 10 in a very, very good ball game so far. And, and when I say very, very, it's not like both teams are playing flawless. Certainly, Strom Thurman's got to be upset about the penalty on the kickoff return. But again, we were just talking about it. We don't think that it was something, it was just one of those things the kid stopped and the guy kept running down the field and ran into it, probably. Yeah. And uh, I, I, if, I, if I'm correct, it might have been a sophomore player, one of the younger players for Strom Thurmond. I really don't think he meant to block the guy at all, but there was a collision. And uh, unfortunately, he was 40 yards behind the ball carrier when the guy was getting ready to step into the end zone. That's heartbreaking. In, in your career, how many times have you seen that happen? Uh, it happens uh, regularly. Yeah, it <laughs> happens a lot more than you would think. I can remember it happened. Oh, kinds of different times while playing. Yeah. Um, and much less later on or along the way where people, for some reason, <laughs> now I've seen people be uh, blatantly knock somebody in the back. Yeah, you know, what are you thinking about? about? So no reason for it. And uh, it's one of those things that should never happen, but it does. But as it is, it turned out to be a good break for Aiken on that last return. Strom Thurman kept off the board. They'll get the ball first when we return for the – CMI kickoff to start the second half. Right now, we're going to go down to the field where the Aiken High School marching band has been practicing hard all summer long. We're over here at the Aiken Standard right across the street from Aiken High, and every evening we hear these guys playing. So I know that it's uh, going to be a performance that we'll all be proud of, and let's give them their due. The Aiken High School fighting Green Hornets marching band.
the Aiken High School Fighting Green Hornet Marching Band wowing us here at halftime of our game between Strom Thurmond, the Rebels out of Edgefield against the Fighting Green Hornets at Aiken High. 10 to 10 is our score at half. We'll take a break and we'll come back and get ready for the CMI kickoff when we return on Gold's Gym Game of the Week. Pruitt Health is here to help. For more than four decades, Pruitt Health has partnered with healthcare professionals to deliver exceptional care to families across the Southeast. Since the beginning, our focus has always been on quality, quality programs, quality services, and quality people. Looking forward to the future, we've developed an innovative model of care to provide comprehensive, streamlined solutions. Get well for life with Pruitt Health. What a crowd we have on hand tonight. And last, before kickoff, here comes the game ball. Set to be brought in from the sky by parachute. The crowd has spotted him as he comes in for a landing. Oh, that's gonna hurt. From orthopedics to neurology, imaging to pain management, or even if a good idea just turns into an accident, CMI can help you play again. Learn more at CMI.md. A Humvee tractor has been Aiken's place for farm equipment, implements, accessories, and supplies. But did you know that Holly is your place for home yard equipment too? Riding and push mowers, weed eaters, chainsaws, and brands including Kubota, Husqvarna, and still equipment you can depend on. Come inside and see our expanded showroom. Holly is the exclusive dealer for Yeti coolers and now carry Generac generators. Holly Tractor, 1721 Richland Avenue East. Two and a half years ago, we had our first child at Aiken Regional. When our second child was on the way, we knew we wanted to go back to women's life care. But this time, it got complicated. At 25 weeks pregnant, I had to have my gallbladder removed. I would have been terrified, but Dr. Mento and his staff were so caring. When you trust your hospital this much, there's really no reason to go anywhere else. I should know. I was born there, too. Unique Expressions in the Mitchell Shopping Center is a treasure chest of gifts for all occasions. The collegiate collection is second to none. South Carolina, Clemson, Georgia, ACC or SCC. Support your favorite school. From clothing to mailboxes to tailgating items, Unique Expressions has them all. Handbags by Spartina and the Vera Bradley Collection. And a U.S. Post Office on site for your mailing convenience. Stop in today at Unique Expressions, 1521 Whiskey Road. Make sure you stay tuned to the end of the game tonight, or we'll have the Center for Dentistry MVP as voted by our, ex what would it be? Extremely smart panel of people? <laughs> Something like that. Qualified, <laughs> highly qualified panel. All right, let's do a Holly Tractor sideline report. Noah Fight has some stats for us. I do, I do. Before I get to those, I'll update you on some of the other scores around the area. Um, continues to be uh, drear all over Fox Creek, 41-0. Wow. Uh, North Augusta, 9-0 over Lakeside. And I have heard that the big scoreboard at uh, North Augusta is malfunctioning for whatever that's worth. Uh, that's, that's missing Coach Pittman. Yeah, it is. I think it is. <laughs> uh, Bamberg Earhart scores uh, uh, right before the half. They lead uh, Wilson Elko 7-0. And Abbeville has a 14-0 lead over Silver Bluff at the half. As far as uh, here at this game, at uh, some stats of note at the half, um, Aiken quarterback uh, Bryson uh, Jones was five of six for 102 yards and that touchdown where he somehow threaded the needle right there on the front corner of the end zone. Uh, meanwhile, Tyree Stidham for uh, Strom Thurmond was four of seven with two of those incompletions coming right before the half uh, for 76 yards. And he also uh, had six carries for 21 yards and a touchdown, while Aiken's leading uh, ball carrier is uh, Brayton Sanders, who had 11 carries for 30 yards. And uh, the big gain man uh, in the first half was Israel Talbert, who uh, moonlighted a little bit from his role as uh, a defensive back with uh, the two carries for 55 yards. The long 48-yard uh, one really set up 
the uh, Strom Thurman's uh, lone touchdown drive. All right. Well, we appreciate you coming up with some stats for us here at the half. You any questions, Coach? I think we're in good shape there. All right. That's Noah Fight with our Holly Tractor sideline report. We'll get back with him later in the third quarter and get some more updates on scores as we're ready for the second half kickoff. This kickoff sponsored by CMI, Carolina Musculoskeletal Institute. They're helping get teams back in the game so they can play again. And we're ready to go with a score tied at 10. Aiken going to kick to Strom Thurman. Israel Talbert was deep, but that's fielded by number eight. Comes up the middle, finds his way. Ryan across the 30 to the 31. And that's where Strom Thurman will put it in play. First and Ryan 10, DeAndre Ryan. Ryan on the return. Touchdown 10 for the Hornets. Springs 23. Touchdown 10, Thurman. Third yard on Curious to see whether the conditioning and the heat begins to tell. Once again, we've got a team that has nobody playing both ways and a team that has five or six guys going both ways. Could make a difference, especially for the big guys out there. Oh, absolutely. It's hard for us. We're, we're having to play both ways. <laughs> and get through this. I'd, I'd complain and say it'd be nice to have some lights, but that might add to the heat. So we'll keep with the uh, lights not being turned on to this point. Lots of lights coming from the baseball field, which is adjacent to Haygood Stadium. That's Henderson Johnson Field over next door. All right, first play, a little fake. Stedman tries to keep it, but Aiken Reads the that, comes up the middle, and stops and cold that's in that's the back of a loss of three. And Austin Schofield <laughs> made his large presence felt that time. He blocked out the lights from the stadium. Loss of three from the 31 back to the 28-yard line. Second down, 13. Jalen Dugar in that tackle also. Three split wide to the left. He looks left. Now going down the middle, finds a man wide open. Cuts across, hit at the 50 yeah, yard line, and driven down at the 48. Big pickup from Strong. As they cross yeah. midfield, it's going to be a Chandler Law Firm first down. And Therese yeah. Nick, yeah. wide receiver, yeah. a sophomore yeah. for Strong Thurman, makes a nice yeah. catch. Yeah. Takes a pretty good lick. Bounces yeah. right back up. Line Number 12 on the tackle, that's Trevon Simpkins. And he was open. And Stidman did a good job of picking him out. Back to the ground game. Right up the middle. This is Chin. Chin digging. Refused to go down. Carried a man on his back. Simpkins hanging on for dear life. Crosses the 40 to the 38 the yard line. That's going to be good for 10 yards, I believe. Chin. And that's the best power run we've seen so far tonight out of Strong Thurman. Chin really drove that time. Picked up good yardage. Pick up was another first down. Another channel law firm first down. Two in a row for the Rebels. Going to keep this time to Stidman. It's down Stand to back. the 31-yard line. Stand to the 31. That'll pick up second seven down. yards. Brings up second Stand down and three. Carolina and Stidman right. showed some quickness that time. That was a nice break up the field. <laughs> second down, 30. He took a little bit of a shot. Looks like he's a little gimpy after that one. And off to Gilchrist. Gilchrist, again, been held in check, but he's battling Gilchrist. here, and he crosses the 25 to 24. Aiken side. says it's a fumble. Let's and see Aiken if they the call it a fumble. They do. They say Aiken has recovered Gilchrist it. Gilchrist, Gilchrist down, fighting for extra yardage. Maybe fought a little bit too long. Let's see if we've got that on the replay, Specs Vision replay. They couldn't bring him down. A couple guys had a hold of him, and he's fighting for whatever he can get. The ball did come out, no question about that. He tried to recover it. But, you know, coming into this game, it appears to me that Aiken was saying, we are not going to let Gilchrist run all over us. They, uh, they've they got to take that away, and they've done that tonight. He has not been very effective running straight up the field. And quite frankly, coming into tonight's game, that's certainly I think you and I both expected Gilchrist to be the heavy hammer on the field. I expected him to be dominant, frankly, and he has not been yet. 
The night is still young, and there's a whistle Ryan before Parker's he can, can get started. Yeah, well, there was movement line. on the right side of the offensive line that time. Early minutes, early the seconds of the second Parker's half. 15. Missing the whopper we had before the game. We want to thank McDonald's. McDonald's, our food sponsor, providing the whole crew with hamburgers or chicken nuggets or whatever it was that somebody ate. They had me a quarter pounder. <laughs> Tom and Pam Powers, the owners of McDonald's here in Aiken, we appreciate them sponsoring us. We're all full, at least before the game. We'll go ahead and put our order in to every bar here now for, <laughs> for after the game. <laughs> All right, that was a second down second play down that 15. loses four yards, so Aiken going the wrong way. Second down, 14. Snap back, a little jet sweep. And it doesn't develop and get outside. Jet sweep not working tonight for either side, really. Well, both these teams are very quick on the corners. Tough to get outside. They're doing a nice job, and they, there have been some nice open field tackles. And both teams have shown that they'll hit you. That jet sweep picked up. Oh, we'll call it two yards and call it third down and 12. It's a long 12. So Aiken, their first attempt here in the second half, not having much success. Now under pressure, sacked. Jones. Caught back, back in the backfield around the 15-yard line. line. That's going to make it fourth and long. The punting unit will come Touchdown. on the field. Uh, and that 3-5 defense is really designed to be working against pounds. spread type offenses and passing situations. You can bring people from a lot of different places. Yeah, Terrific down penetration down that time and nowhere for Jones to go. I have another injury. Uh, Aiken Regional Medical Center injury timeout. Is it going to go check the player? I think that is cramps as well. Chandler Talbert, by the way, on that tackle. They're going to have a little bit of a break, water break. We'll take a break with them. We'll be right back. Two and a half years ago, we had our first child at Aiken Regional. When our second child was on the way, we knew we wanted to go back to women's life care. But this time, it got complicated. At 25 weeks pregnant, I had to have my gallbladder removed. I would have been terrified, but Dr. Mento and his staff are so caring. When you trust your hospital this much, there's really no reason to go anywhere else. I should know. I was born there too. All right. Still attending to the injured player. Did you pick up the number? I did not get the number yet, but uh, you're right. It's cramps. And that's the first one that we've seen for sure tonight. And I got to believe we're going to see more in the second half. So we'll uh, let you know who the player is. Again, they're they're working on his legs and bending them in a way that you got to believe that that's cramps. Uh, I got a cramp the other night. It was a couple of weeks ago <laughs> in bed. And I woke out of a deep sleep and turned my foot the wrong way. Mm. You bring it back. It's number nine, we're being told. Devante which, uh, Gators. Yeah, Gators. He will and not be the only one, I promise you. And uh, he is limping noticeably. <laughs> Man, do those things hurt. And I put my pushed my foot the wrong way. <laughs> it went out instead of in. Ooh. I, I can only imagine what it's like on a night like tonight to catch one Making of those things. To the edge of the I always thought that was good news if it was just a cramp. At any rate, <laughs> it gave us a chance to have a Bragg Heating Company timeout keeping you comfortable since 1970. We appreciate them. All right, the punting unit gets out on the field. And Gators is now on the sidelines, walking it off. I think we'll see him later tonight. And nice punt, spiraling kick, going back, sending them deep. Ryan went back and decided to leave it alone. It goes out of bounds at the 31-yard line. And that's a heck of a punt. That's a very nice snap. They were worried about that coming into the season. They've obviously worked on it hard, and they're doing a nice job. Nice kick also. That was a 50-plus yard punt. And he had a couple real good punts last year. That's Jacob Norton. He had a punt in the uh, playoff game. I believe it was him in the, in the jamboree. 
No, well, it's hard to remember who did what in the gym. <laughs> I was going to give him credit. Now that I think about it, it may have been somebody else that got ball over their head and they weren't playing it live. Yeah, I think it was him. It, and he went back, picked it up, turned around, and he was under no pressure, but he, he went in, picked it up, and kicked it. He must have kicked it 70 yards in the air. It was a heck of a kick. All right, Strom Thurman, second possession of the second half. Chandler Law from first down, a little screen back to Gilchrist. It's got some room here, and this is where Gilchrist can be dangerous. Aiken is able to crowd him, not before he picks up 12 yards. And another Strom Thurman, Chandler Law from first down. Well executed play. Nicely done. Good call. Loosen things up just a little bit. Here's the specs. Did you see that replay? All right, back on the field strong. Jumps. So that'll be a five yard walk off against the Rebels. We'll make it first and 15. And uh, both teams have had a few penalties to, tonight. Not an incredible number. First, we've done some first games where we thought we wouldn't get out of the ninth for all the flags. I agree. And one thing I've noticed, or, or at least I think I noticed, Gilchrist seems to be running a little bit straight up tonight. I think he's got to get a little forward body lean. Of course, he's a tall young man. It's easy for me to say he's he's a lot taller than I am. <laughs> All right, that pass a little bit low, unable to dig it out. Nix was over there trying to get to it, and falls away, incomplete. Second down, 15. Stidham throws a good hard pass. Left-hander, mind you, of uh, Michael Vick. Not really. Uh, yeah, I, I was going to say that, you know. They're, they're both left-handed. <laughs> they're both left-handed, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love people making the comparison. <laughs> yeah. Somebody was comparing one of the North Augusta kids to Michael Vick. I went, he can throw it like Michael Vick, and he was a, Michael Vick was yeah, a good right. runner. Uh, yeah, Michael right. Vick can throw the football. <laughs> He's got a cannon for an arm. All right, we got a flag on the far side of the field. That usually means somebody lined up off sides. That can be either way. It's Aiken High lined oh. up off sides. Now that's unusual uh, to be uh, that far outside. So that gets the five yards back that Strom lost on the procedure to start this drive, start this uh, possession, this fresh set of downs. How about that? All right, turns, throws to his left hand oh. under pressure. Great yeah, pressure that time. Had to get rid of it Tender quickly. Turn. Nicks couldn't Tender. get turned around. Incomplete, Special third down and 10. Number seven, Sanders. That was Sanders, the Sanders running back, playing defense down, from his linebacker down. position. Both Lewis and Sanders are the linebacker, and they're the starting tailbacks. They sort of split time. And as Coach has pointed out on many occasions, a lot of players playing both ways for Aiken High. They put their best athletes out there on the field. All right, here he comes, looking down the middle, now under pressure, trying to get outside, not going to make it. Able to get away and pick up positive yardage, far from the first down, but he didn't lose yardage. Picked up a couple of yards. So it's going to bring up fourth down and eight. And I believe you'll see the punting unit and Cole Fell on the field for Strong Thurman. And there's Lewis, and I believe he's got a cramp. We've seen him running around a couple times tonight. The way he's looking, I'm guessing it's a cramp, but we'll let the trainer take a look at him. Well, we got through the first half and didn't have very many cramps or injuries, but now they're starting to add up as we go along. And Again, yep. once you start getting cramps, drinking all the water in the world ain't going to help you that night. No, it isn't. Okay, if you don't drink and hydrate prior to the game, and I mean a couple of days prior to the game and stuff, you're... You're going to be in trouble. Actually, this is Lewis, the other running back, the mm -hmm. other linebacker. And uh, he, uh, he he came up gimpy one time that we thought probably was the onset of cramps. And I think it's on right now as they bend that leg. So the Aiken Regional Medical Center injury report is that cramps and the heat starting to take its toll on Aiken. And again, I think that goes back to what you kept alluding to, Coach, is the fact that the players are having to play both ways on Aiken, and that will finally start to wear on them. 
So far it's been the fit athletes are the ones that are not, you know, 290 pounds or 300 pounds that are getting the cramps, but they, they do more running. And in pit formation, Cole Ford in the 99. They'll learn a lesson from all of this, and hopefully next week when they play South Aiken, which, by the way, we'll be back with the Gold's Gym Game of the Week next week here at Aiken High. South Aiken going to travel across town, and we'll have the, the big city rivalry here at the beginning of the season. And uh, those guys will have to start hydrating earlier in the week. And I think that's going to be a good football game. I think both teams are improved. I was uh, impressed with both of these in the Jamboree as being better. Oh, of course, Strom Thurmond wasn't there. Great punt. Punts inside the 10 to the 9. And good coverage. I think that was a smart move to get away from the ball on the behalf of the receiver for Aiken. Didn't have a clear shot to catch it. As a coach, however, you want that ball caught in the yeah, air. You don't want it rolling it. around down there. So yeah, Strom's got the field yeah, position yeah, going yeah. for it here it's in the uh, early going in the second half. 644 left to go in the third quarter. We are tied at 10, but Aiken finds themselves in the shadow of the end zone. They've got 91 yards to go as they start first and 10 from the nine. Now we get a flag. And again, I bet you this is lining up in the neutral zone. And I wonder if a strong player didn't step into that. Now they're gonna call a procedure on Aiken. So the Aiken Step player was moving around. Step off. Again, yeah. called from way over there on the other side of the field. And Cameron counts as saying, you know, what did we do wrong? <laughs> Number 54's got his hands up. Says, we didn't do anything. <laughs> What's the penalty here? All right, Aiken now 96 Aiken. yards to go. First and 15. Aiken. Running up the middle is Sanders. Fights hard. Strong hits Sanders. him in a Sanders host of rebels, bring him down. Line. Short of the 10, looks like he got back to the original line of scrimmage. Five yards would have been the gain. We'll give him four yeah, yards. Second down, down 11. Two. Second down, we'll call 11. Now, important here that Aiken not make the mistake and give Strom a, an easy feel to, for the lead. And here they try to get outside and break into Sanders. Sanders. Fights hard, gets and up to around the 12. The right to the middle of the line. That's the one stat that I was kind of surprised at that Noah gave us at halftime. I thought Sanders had more than 30 yards. It seemed to me like he was gaining a little bit better than what the stat showed. 11 carries, 33 yards. That's uh, that's not a whole lot. Uh, and now we've got a holding call against Aiken. So let's see if Strom takes the play. It'll be third and long. If they don't take the penalty, it'll be half the distance if they do. And they're they're, they're going to go ahead and take the penalty. That'll back them up to the five-yard line. So Aiken will have second down again, five, second down and 14. So Strom trying to get them as far back in this hole as they can. Aiken got two plays to get it out of here, and they run it right up the middle. Sanders trying to get behind that big line goes very – very Game short, two. maybe one yard. It's coming and up third and long, third and 12. And of course, Drom Thurman's hoping for some sort of a mistake Thurman. down here. Mishandled the snap. There's another handoff. Aiken's going to be content to not make a mistake. Uh oh. Bring it out here to the 10 yard line. Sanders to the 10, fourth down. And that's going to bring up a punting situation. It didn't look like they all kind of scattered there for a second like a fumble, but well, that's not the case. Rashad Lott, number 35, came out of the, st out of the stack with the football, but uh, refs weren't buying that one. So once again, Aiken in the hole here, and it's going to be up to Jacob Norton to kick him out of this trouble. He had a great punt that was 50-plus yards. This time he's at the 10-yard line. A 50-yard punt would be what the doctor ordered for Aiken. Strom deep, set up at the 45-yard line. Bad snap, gets it together, does get it off. Good job kicking it. It's end over end. Now it's muffed, and Strom does a good job of getting on that ball. That was Ryan 
that was able to scramble and make up for it. That was almost a disaster for Strong Thurman. Yeah, and that was shades of last year, okay? And if you'll notice, the snap was not uh, on target, a little bit to his left. He did a great job recovering the ball and then getting at least a kickoff and uh, not one of his best, but uh, under the circumstances, a very important one. All right, there's a penalty, personal foul running into the kicker is the call yeah, against Strom Thurmond. Well, so all of that was for nothing. They're gonna get a 15 yard walk off and a first down for Aiken as it's walked out to the 25 yard line. And you know, that that's a tough call because once that ball's been fumbled and he's picking it up and so on, uh, a lot of times he loses the right to be just a kicker. He could have been running with that ball. So now we get movement across the front. Let's see if they've got the specs. Did you see that replay on the punt? That we can take a quick look because this would be a five yard walk off against Strong. A little sloppy right now. And that's probably the heat and a little bit of exhaustion on the part of some of the players. All right, Aiken back up to the line of scrimmage. Here's the punt. Let's see what the roughing. Ooh. All right, well, back to play, and Aiken gets it outside, gets up to the 40-yard line. That's a pickup of 15 yards and a first down for Aiken. And that was Bryson Jones, quarterback. I think he's done a nice job tonight. What do you think about the roughing call? I'm not so sure about the roughing call. <laughs> I didn't think so. But Aiken gets the break, keeps the ball, gets a first down now. A Chandler Law Firm first down. Now heading it off right up the middle. A Strom Thurman bust him right at the line of scrimmage. May have lost a yard. And that was Sanders again. Sanders. Now that's hit. Lewis this time. Is it Lewis? Yeah. No, they got yeah. Lewis back in the game Maybe after his leg thing. problems. They're going to give him forward progress just over the line of scrimmage. So we'll call it second down and nine. Aiken keeps pounding away at the middle of the Strom Thurmond line, hoping that sooner or later they'll bust one open. Looked outside. I think he saw at number 11. Bryson Carolina was not being covered up. Well, Strong Thurman made a good adjustment very quickly. He got outside, held him to a four-yard gain. It'll bring up third down and six. Balls at the 44-yard line. Need to make the 50. Jones looks outside, now runs and cuts it back inside. Dragging a man behind him, he gets close to the 50. He's gonna be just short, a yard short of the first down, and it's gonna bring up a, a big play. Fourth down and one. This will be an interesting call. You gotta figure, that you've got Sanders in the game now at tailback. You gotta believe that they're gonna try to bust it right up the middle. This is how they scored the two point conversion. Here he comes right up the middle, picks his hole. He gets 50, crosses the 50, and I believe he's got the first down. And he does. As he picks up the yard, we'll give him two. First and 10, a Chandler Law Firm first down for Aiken High School as they cross midfield. And Aiken, with the help of a roughing the punter in the end zone, has brought it out, picked up a couple of first downs, and is in business in this 10-10 ball game. And the fans, I'm sure, like that call by Coach. I can't believe that's not a motion play. They didn't call it. And Bryson Jones, he fumbles at the end. Let's see if they're going to call him down. I think they're calling him down. They're sort of letting Strom run around. Uh, Aiken, Aiken head coach Brian Neal comes out screaming at Bryson, saying, hold on to the football. They called him down. Let's take a look at this one. And Bryson Jones has got some moves. Oh, wow. And it was his elbow on the ground. I think that's the white call. They don't have instant replay in high school. No, they don't. <laughs> we have it on TV. All right, and here's a flag coming out from behind the defense. <laughs> and there's a legal participation. Uh, 
Dad gave me a list of what the referee signals yep. were. I think he came in off the sideline that time. Yeah. All right, five yard walk off, first and 15. Used to be able to see that a little better when everybody would huddle up. Now that they don't huddle, you know, things have changed. Well, the, uh, the play before on Bryson's long play, uh, Sanders wasn't set in the backfield. That's why I thought they would call a procedure penalty. He first wasn't set, 15, but they didn't call it. So they got a break. And here comes Bryson Jones again. Knocks a man down. He's running Bryson strong. Down. He sure is. And he gets out Second just down. short of the 35. Looks like he's inside the 36. So it'll bring up second down and eight. He picked up seven yards. That's a nice job. And I like what Sanders did. He took the fake and then made a block. Now outside, here's Jones again. Looks like Aiken has decided that Jones is the man to Jones let him run the football here for a while. Yeah. And I think it's going to be holding. Yeah. Holding against Aiken is the call. So that's going to be a 10-yard walk-off from the spot. Just as earlier in the game, Strom Thurmond found a little something on their left side. Uh, Aiken seems to be having some success running to the left right now, and uh, Austin Schofield happens to be over there. I already mentioned he's like 6'5", 300 pounds. It might not be a bad guy to run behind. He is a big man. <laughs> his, his brother played at South Aiken and is at Tennessee. So seven yards. Well, here's uh, Sanders again. He gets into the middle field, breaks a tackle. Going to have the first down inside the 25, down Great at the 21-yard line. Bryson Sanders. First down. Brayton Sanders, excuse me, and making that, the play. And that's a well-executed play. Fakes the pass, and then they got a little counter draw coming back. Very well executed. Look sharp. And now we got a timeout on the field. It's a Bragg Heating Company timeout. We'll take it with them. We'll be right back. Unique Expressions in the Mitchell Shopping Center is a treasure chest of gifts for all occasions. The collegiate collection is second to none. South Carolina, Clemson, Georgia, ACC or SEC. Support your favorite school. From clothing to mailboxes to tailgating items, Unique Expressions has them all. Handbags by Spartina and the Vera Bradley Collection. And a U.S. Post Office on site for your mailing convenience. Stop in today at Unique Expressions, 1521 Whiskey Road. Let's go down to the sidelines for a Holly Tractor Report. No fight. Thank you, Ed. Uh, a couple of updates here. North Augusta remains uh, in a low-scoring game. They lead uh, Lakeside 9-3. Uh, Bishop England uh, sees its lead cut. Uh, they now lead, uh, I'm sorry, not Bishop England, Hamburg Earhart. They lead Wilson Elko 7-6. Dreer still 48-0 over Fox Creek. And Abbeville 21-0 over Silver Bluff. Back to you guys. Thank you, Noah. Aiken on the first play back on the field, that runs it straight up the middle. And that's Yankee. Sanders. He looked down for a short game, but he kept moving those feet. Picks up five, second down and five. Aiken now 45 seconds left to go here in the third quarter, was punting out of their end zone, got a roughing the kicker call on a bad snap, and they are moving down the field, looking to take this lead 10 to 10 as we play in the third quarter of the Goals Gym game of the week. And Terrell Lewis back in at the tailback position. They give it to him, no, Jones keeps, almost falls down, staggers Jones. outside and he's tackled, he'll lose to the probably a yard. Actually, third he down. was able to fall forward and maybe third pick up a half a yard. Still gonna that call it third down and five. The third quarter. And that's going to be the final play of the third quarter. And Aiken comes out of nowhere from the being dead in the end zone to uh, roughing the kicker and moves down the field. And with one quarter to play, we're tied with Aiken knocking on the door. We'll return for the fourth quarter in the Goals Gym Game of the Week when we return. We are focused on total eye care. 
be it our large selection of designer frames, latest and contact lenses, or our great sunglass collection. We have just what you're looking for. Our doctors offer years of experience and use the latest technology to ensure a comprehensive eye examination. Late afternoon and Saturday appointments are available, so if you want the best in eye care, call Specs today at 642-9902. We welcome Specs Vision Center and Rhett Richardson to our team this year as they are the replay sponsor. And those are some nifty looking glasses, Coach. Yeah, I think you need to get some of those. Well, I was gonna say, I thought you might look good in those, but. <laughs> I'll tell you, you gotta have, both of us have hair, so. <laughs> that looks like a good set with that, uh, that harness and getting them on. Surely you don't get, those things don't get lost. But we're happy to have Rhett and Specs Vision Center as our instant replay sponsor, the Specs. Did you see that replay as we go forward? And Bragg Heating Company, who is our timeout sponsor, and that was kind of a timeout in between quarters. They've been keeping us comfortable since 1970. I'm gonna put in a request for an air conditioner in the Aiken High School press box for next week. So hopefully that gets out there. And the officials got the ball spotted properly now, and here we go. Third down, Aiken decides to keep it with the hot hand, Jones, but he doesn't get through the line of scrimmage. I think he probably did lose a yard on this one. Bring a fourth and six, and Norton will come out just as Cole fell as the punter and place kicker for Strom Thurmond. Cole, uh, Norton is the punter and place kicker for Aiken High. And both coaches said that their kickers got stronger during the off season, kicking the ball much better than they did last year. They're a year older, got a little bit more experience. This could be a big kick right to start the season. Strom had a 22 yard field goal. This one will be from 25 yard line, 35 yard kick. Kick is up, line drive, it is no good. They thought that it was good in the stands. <laughs> It, it made the thing, but it missed the uprights. It was online. So, our score remains tied at 10 as the 35 yard field goal miss by Norton, and the ball will bring it at, be brought out to the 20 yard line. Strom Thurman, with 11.09 left to go in the ball game, will try to take it to the Tyler Tire end zone. Whoever can get to the Tyler Tire end zone first is going to win the Gold's First Gym game, game of the week. I do believe line. we'll see if we're pathetic on that. May just take a field goal, though. There's a handoff to Gilchrist, and he is stacked yeah, up at the line, line of scrimmage. May have lost a yard, maybe two. First and they have the definitely kept Chad Gilchrist under wraps And the momentum in this ball game has shifted to Aiken. They look to be the better team right at the moment. A little bit more excited, and they're making better plays. Loss of two yards, second down and 12. Strom checks him at the line, now looks to the sidelines to get the play. Calls it out, two left, two right. Now drops back, looks to his right, gonna fling it down the field. Aiken, actually the only yeah, guy down there is one of the Aiken defenders. He overthrew yeah, everybody. It's instead, line. that was not the most pretty pass you'll ever see. That looked more like a wind up and throw. Well, they had good coverage and I, I do believe he was throwing a Hail Mary there and it uh, didn't connect. So third down, 12 yards. Big play here for both sides. Aiken trying to get the ball back after missing the field goal. Strom trying to pick up the first down and get their defense, keep their defense off the field. Now going to look over here, got a man in the flat, going to break back across. This is Nix. He get right away. He's in the open field. Got a man to beat. Able to make a move. Aiken going to be able to not bring him down at midfield. He's still on his feet, and he's dragged down inside the 25 at the 22-yard line. And Nix just willed his way down the field. And, and what happens, the momentum had shifted, I truly believe that. A well-executed screen out here. Cuts back across the field, and Nick just makes something happen. 
Okay, you've got one of their outstanding players. He makes an outstanding play, and uh, right away we've got the momentum that's shifted to the other side. That's a great play by Nick. So Aiken, who looked to be in great position, just like Strom did at the beginning of the third quarter when they had Aiken backed up punting out First of the end zone. Strom makes a big third and 12 and gets it down the field, reverses the fields, and now is inside the 25, 22 yard line, first and 10. And Tyrese Nick, the wide receiver, got that screen pass there and made it a big run, only a sophomore. That's a big play for him. That play started at the 18. They get end up at the other 22. Now, that is Chen coming up the middle. He's gonna pass the 20 to the 19, pick up three yards, second down and seven. And one of the things I like to see right there, Chin had a vice grip on that football. By the way, he Nick's, was not giving it up. Nick's is past 60 yards. Quite a turnaround. Two in the backfield, brings Ryan in motion. Hands off, trying to get outside, not gonna make the corner, but does pick up some positive yardage. Back number five. That was Chin yeah. again. Like you say, he's holding on hard number and he picked up four Sanders yards. Stop for the it's going to bring up third down and three. And interesting, Gilcrest, who we assumed would be the go to guy, third down three. really sort of the decoy now. Here comes Talbert. Talbert, who we saw run up some big yardage, unable to get and turn the corner. Talbert had 52 yards on two consecutive plays in the first half. This time he's brought down, may have made a yard. Aiken coaches in the press box here were just screaming to protect the wide side. They must have had something on their scouting report. They're going to say he lost a yard. Fourth down and four. And Strom Thurman lines up to go for it. The clock ticks under eight minutes. 10 to 10, our score. Now looks to the sideline to Stidman. Makes the call. Snap, handoff. Albert tries to get in the middle. Aiken snaps him, but he won't go down. This is going to be close. Depends on the spot. I don't believe he got it. And he did not get it. Aiken's going to take over on downs. He's a yard short. Woo, what a ball game. Yes, indeed. Good defense right there. So Strom looking for the Tyler Tire end zone. Can't find it. And now Aiken finds themselves at the 14-yard line. They're 86 yards away. And we're going to have an official timeout, a water break. I believe. We'll call it a Bragg Heating Company timeout, and we'll be right back. Since 1970, Bragg Heating Company has been keeping Aiken and the surrounding communities comfortable. Our factory-trained staff can keep you on top of the latest in heating and cooling technology, and our complete metal shop allows us to make any specialty piece your home may need. We recommend the best systems for your home, Train, Carrier, Dakin, Mitsubishi Ductless, and Bosch Geothermal Systems. We accept most major credit cards and offer financing. So when you need your system maintained, repaired, or replaced, call Bragg Heating Company. We're here to make you comfortable. All right. Again, Bragg Heating Company new. Roger, Roger sent a note over and asked us to make sure we use the skinny lens on him. And I said, I've been asking them to use the skinny lens on me for years. <laughs> they better not be hiding that darn thing from me. I thought he looked pretty good in the commercial. Oh, yeah. All right, here comes Aiken. Aiken going to try to march and reverse the field again. They've got eight minutes, uh, seven minutes, yeah, 28 yeah, seconds seven, left to go as the clock eight. runs. That goes nowhere. It gains them a yard. Six, second down and nine. Second down. All 
All right, Aiken lines him up, gets him set, hooks to the sidelines, gets the call, ready to go. Jones fakes the throw, now hands off, tries to get up the middle. Strong being stingy. Maybe, maybe a half a yard. Third down. Let's see, now they didn't move the stick at all. Third down and nine. So another big third and long play. Both sides have had these here in the second half and have been able to convert. Aiken on the on the penalty on the roughing the punter on a fourth down converted. Got some help. Let's see what they do here. You look to the sidelines. Drops back. Going to roll. Looking, looking, looking. There's a flag. That's going to be holding. Against Aiken. And I have a feeling that will be declined as the pickup was minimal. And it'll bring up fourth down. I think they'll have to punt here. I don't think they're going to try anything this deep in their own territory. They actually took the holding call earlier on the in the third quarter, and that turned out badly. But it turned out badly on the punt. So here comes the punting unit. That actually lost yardage. So it's fourth and eleven. Lost two yards. Norton on to punt. He's had some good punts tonight. Special team play has been critical in this ball game. A touchdown called back. Roughing the kicker against both teams. Let's see what happens. Good snap. Gets this punt away. High spiraling kick. Backs him up. Ryan takes it on the 45. Now trying to get outside. Gets outside. Gets a block. Has a wall. And he struggles up the sidelines past the 30. It looks like he's going to be down at the 27, 26 yard line where Strong Thurman's in business. Short field, score tied 10 to 10. You know they will try and just get this into field goal range. Well, that was an outstanding return. Got the wall finally set up. You can't do that unless there's a good punt. That's, that's the strange thing about it. it. Was a good punt, well fielded, good blocks, no penalties, and uh, they had the wall to get behind. Great field position. Snap, and off straight to the middle. Here's Gilchrist, Gilchrist breaking tackles. That might be his best run of the evening. Without a doubt. He gets Jefferson down inside the 15 to the 14 yard line, picks up a first down. And now Strong Thurman knocking on the door. You know they'll keep it on the ground, ground it out, see if they can run a little of this clock and get it in the end zone as opposed to the field goal. Three split wide to the right. Nick split wide to the left. Now Stidman going to fall him right up the middle, and he's going to score. Wow. Touchdown. That was quick. Two plays. Strom Thurman, after the punt, takes the lead 16 to 10 as they're in the Tyler Tire end zone. Six points on the board. Point after try coming. And nobody touched him right up the middle. Not a hand laid on him. Outstanding blocking. Good play call by Strom Thurman. Aiken trying to get an extra man out there on the field. We take a look at the specs. Did you see that replay? Gilchrist blocking. And Gilchrist does a nice job. He, he had to key block. Uh, at the second level. He got to the linebacker and uh, cleared a path for Stidham. Well done. Snap, kick down, hold, kicks up, and it is good. That's that an important good. point. Makes it 17 to 10. We'll take a break and come back at the Gold's Gym game of the week with Strom Thurman leading 17 to 10 over Aiken. We'll be right back. 
One evening we were sitting around the table, and my four-year-old stood up in his chair, and he said, Dad, I want to be just like you. And I thought, that's great, until he said, I want to be nice and big and fat. It was at that moment I realized I need to make a change. I took the scales at over 208 pounds, and that was the point that I realized I really needed to make a change. In fact, we both really needed to make a change. Together, we have lost 150 pounds, and our family has a healthy new future. Welcome back. Five minutes, 24 seconds. If nothing else from the Aiken perspective, it didn't take long. They got plenty of time. They've got lots of time. Strom Thurman leading 17 to 10 over the Fighting Green Hornets. And this is big for Aiken. Aiken wants to get off to a good start. They got a good home crowd. They had the ultimate tailgating going on in the parking lot before the game. Aiken does do that. The students come out and tailgate and our ultimate tailgating brought to you by Unique Expressions. They have all the unique tailgate supplies you'd ever need. You need to go by and check them out. Oh, it looked like Sanders was going to get loose, and I believe that's Chandler came through and hit him, stood him up, and put him down after he fought off a couple of tackles. Looks like he lost his uh, mouthpiece in there. You're looking for something. <laughs> Shaking his head a little bit, too. Nice tackle. Here's the specs. Did you see that replay? After the CMI kickoff. And that's who it was. Chandler. Chandler Talbot. Two Talberts. Israel Talbert and Chandler Talbert. And Bob Talbert. The local dentist sitting right here in front of us tonight. He comes out to all the Aiken games. Big fan. Don't see Bill Bentley out here tonight. Must have been too hot. Mistake to start. They don't want to see that. Need a right. good drive here. Five yard walk off. First and 15. Backs up. Looks down the field. Under pressure. Gets away. Ducks. And almost gets away, but. Unable to get out of there. Nice open field tackle that time by Storm Thurman's number 33, Montez Coleman. He picked up a couple of yards, but he would have picked up much more if he gets by Montez. Second down. Second down, 13. Aiken needs a big play here. Down, steps up. Oh, keeps running. Bryson Jones. I'll tell you what, that all that's a heck of an effort. It's going to be still short of a first down, about four yards. But he picked up about eight. As we look at the specs, did you see that replay? There's a pile of them there. He gets through. Makes a man miss there. And finally brought down, but not before he picked up some pretty good yardage. Third and four. Falls at the 39 yard line. They're going to have to make the 43 and just beyond it to get the first down. Now, under oh. pressure, and this time he's going to be sacked. Big number 74, Chad Stevens, comes through. He turned back, and here he came, and there was no getting around Chad. And that's going to bring up fourth and long as the punting unit back out on the field. And Stevens is the nose guard. And last year he had five sacks to lead the team, I believe, and uh, here he gets one in the first game. And that's a little bit unusual. You don't always see the nose guard making any sacks. They've, they're going to take up space in the middle there. But he gets his first one of the season, and that's a big one. That says a lot about him, too, because he rolled to his right, came back across the field, and here comes Stevens straight up the middle, able to contain. Punt's a good one. They're going to let it roll out of bounds. And it'll be just short of the 20-yard line. Looks like the 22, or Strom Thurman will put it in play first and 10. A Chandler Law Firm first down with only three minutes and two seconds. Strom with a seven-point lead on the Fighting Green Hornets. Another good punt by Jacob Norton. Okay, he's done a nice job tonight. 
And I really believe that you pointed out many times the players having to play both ways, especially the big guys, they look gassed. They're having a hard time on the Aiken bench keeping up. Here comes a player late for Aiken. Fake to Gilchrist. Stidman keeps it himself up the middle. He breaks a tackle, breaks two tackles, and that's a sign of people getting winded, making arm tackles and not able to bring him down. And Strom now in the driver's seat going to punish him. And Brandon Wilson knocked him out of bounds, but uh, you may be right. They might be a little tired up front now. They get stood up. You can see that. When they look at the film, the coaches are going to say, you know, maybe we were a little tired at this point because uh, a lot of their defensive linemen got stood straight up. And Stidman in great shape, 22 more yards. Here's Gilchrist. Again, Aiken has oh. done a pretty good job on Gilchrist. He's had that one Thank run right Back before the touchdown. But other than that, they bring him down. This time he loses yardage. And I believe Aiken is going to take a Bragg Company timeout. Kier Fuel. They will take a timeout. We'll take a timeout with them. We'll be right back. Tyler's Tire and Auto Center, founded in 1963, family owned and operated for 50 years and dedicated to customer service with safety of your family, our top priority. Tyler's Tire is a full service tire retail, tire repair, and automotive repair facility with ASC certified mechanics. Located in two locations, 1019 Richland Avenue West and 1518 Whiskey Road. Let our family take care of yours, Tyler's Tire and Auto Center. Strom Thurman able to get into the Tyler Tire end zone a couple of times tonight. That's one more than what Aiken has been able to do. And they lead 17 to 10. Aiken added a safety and a two point conversion while Strom Thurman got a Colfell field goal. Second down. And now with 2.44 left to go, Aiken's got two more timeouts. Second down and long. This is a handoff Gilchrist fighting hard. It's close to midfield. It'll come down to 49, and Aiken will use its second timeout, and uh, we'll keep it right here. That'll bring up third down and five. Big play here. If Aiken wants any chance at all, they can't let Strong pick up this first down. And if they can hold them, we're going to go back into another punting situation, and we've had a lot of excitement with that tonight, so anything could happen in this ball game yet. Yeah, and going back to last week at the Jamboree, we saw... I think three out of the four scrimmages had at least one, if not all four, had at least one snap over the punter's head. So obviously that's an aspect of high school football that sometimes here in the, especially in the early going, uh, maybe is where mistakes are made. Uh, it's an easy thing to do. And uh, next week we'll see South Aiken taking on Aiken here at Haygood Stadium in our uh, Gold's Gym game of the week, and their snapper for South Aiken is my nephew, who actually did a fantastic job, and don't think uh, all of his snaps were, were perfect, so he did a good job. Very proud. He's a senior in his last year, so that'll be interesting. It should be an interesting ball game. I, I, Aiken, I think, is very competitive this year, and uh, South Aiken is also. All right, third down, five. Stidman going to try to go up the middle. Aiken was waiting for him. Oh, wow. And, uh, <laughs> Hopefully he doesn't get crushed in that pile. They'll give him the line of scrimmage. It's going to bring up fourth and five. Aiken not going to use the last time out. They'll hold on to that. And uh, the clock continues to run, 2.20. And let's see what Strom does. I think that they would let the clock run down, maybe take a timeout, take a five-yard penalty. I don't think you take a chance of giving them the ball here on fourth down, do you? I do not think so. I'd be very surprised if they did that. And yeah, they're just looking at the sidelines, and I'm sure that's what coach is saying. Just hang on, let the clock run. They'll either call a timeout and punt. Yep, they're calling the timeout now. Got the clock down as far as he could. 151 left to go in the ball game. And uh, they'll run to the sidelines and set this up for the punting unit. Um, I would be sure of that. But well, that's good time management right there. That makes a lot of sense. Now what they have to hope is that they can execute their punt. Timeout. Uh, they have a, a very good punter. 
Play that Cole fell. The They're at the 50 yard line. Time he's got to figure he's going to put this inside the 20. The only fear is the snap, the dreaded snap. And the snap, or Aiken has had some pressure on some of these kicks. Okay, a couple times on the extra points, they just laid back. But when they've come, they've put pressure on both the punter and the extra point man. So uh, this is not a, this isn't a given. And we've had bad snaps by both yeah, teams. Yeah, and game. both yeah, of the punters able to pick it up, down. kick it, and then get roughing the punter call. So you never know what could happen. But Strom able to take a timeout and take the time, you would think that we'll have a pretty decent chance of a good snap and a good kick here by Strom. Yeah, the and the back All right, now we got. He's counting his men. I like that. <laughs> Surely Aiken doesn't have too many people on the field. Somebody might. <laughs> uh, the coaches are yelling they've got 12 men on the field. 12 men on the field for the Hornets. Now, if it's 12 men, if it's a penalty, that's going to be a first down. Yeah, yeah legal substitution. That's automatic first down. Oh, wow. Oh, no. For Strom Thurman. <laughs> now, those are kind of penalties that just drive coaches nuts. So Aiken has one timeout left and 151 to go on the clock. And uh, that's, uh, that's one of those things that you, you, you feel terrible. Aiken's played a pretty good game up to this point, playing one of the better yeah. programs in this area in Strom Thurman. And again, they, were, they may be 2A this year. They were 3A last year. And they almost won the state championship several times in 3A, which Aiken is in now. So. Most of us expected a Storm Thurman win as they run the play and get nowhere. No, there's Schofield again. Wow. And, you know, coming out of a timeout and getting a penalty timeout. for, you know, too many, illegal men the too many men or illegal substitution, whichever it was. Uh, those things, I, and I'd love to tell you it never happened to any of my teams, but that would be an outright lie. All uh, right. It, uh, <laughs> it does happen. Oh, it happens. Yeah. And it's amazing how often it happens on out of a timeout where you end up with that type situation, which, yeah. like you say, is really inexcusable, but t it happens. Just like running into the back of somebody who stopped running on a kickoff on a kickoff return yeah. behind the kickoff and getting a clip. Uh, we saw that in the first half. So it's it's been a typical first game of the year, a week zero kind of game. Yeah, you're going to have to explain that week zero to me still. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's <laughs> one of those things where <laughs> I understood it the first year. They, they tried it. Now they do it every year. Let's make it week one. Yeah, yeah. Next week will be week two. <laughs> Gracious. That's the South Carolina High School League. All right. Aiken takes his last time out. Here's Gilchrist breaking tackles. There we go. That's a nice power 40. run there. He gets eight yards to the 40. And will bring up third down. Third down. And three yards. And you love to see that with your running backs. He lowered his shoulder there, and he delivered a blow as he was getting hit. Strom Thurman basically four yards away from wrapping this one up. And that's the screen pass that really changed the game. So Stidman looks to the sidelines. They're letting the clock run. Now it gives it. Gilchrist, he's going to come up just short. It's going to be four short. They'll let the clock, and here come the flags. And I'm not so sure that's not going to be a late hit on Aiken. Let's see what the call is. Aiken seems to be sort of retreating. Personal foul against Aiken, and that'll do it. That'll be the ball game. They'll walk that off, and Strom will be able to take snaps and let it go. So Aiken kind of loses it here at the end with a couple of uh, bad penalties. Too many men on the field for one on a punting situation. And now they're going to have fourth and yard, maybe maybe a prayer. Only 59 seconds left to go. Victory formation for Strom Thurman. clock had started so now Stidman will stand and wait for his coach to give him the signal to go ahead 
there's no clock, play clock to, to follow here. Takes the snap, uh, takes the knee. Back with Duncan, Duncan to me and he'll have to take one more and we'll line, call it a game. But it's been a good game, Coach. Uh, you know, we and were afraid that it could possibly get out of hand in the second half. But it uh, didn't get out of hand. Close game, touchdown. Strom's going to win it by a touchdown, 17 to 10. But uh, not bad for the first game of the year. Yeah, uh, and we did see some of the things we thought we would. Uh, fortunately, and we didn't see as many grips as I thought we might get. The kids obviously are well conditioned on both teams. The Hornets uh, will play Thurman, right here and next would Friday be a night. A little bit stronger, but uh, the thing game, about Scott Thurman, I like their philosophy. Uh, the they town. have a tough opening five game schedule. Uh, uh, they're a 2 8 team now, and they're playing up virtually every game, with one exception, I believe, and that would be Silver Bluff, where they're both in the same division. But uh, they're playing 3A and 4A teams, and uh, they think that, that will make them better when they get into their region play, and uh, I think they may be right. Uh, Aiken, unfortunately, okay, I thought they gave a real good effort, but they need to win uh, some ball games, okay? They were 1 and 10 last year, and uh, it's important in high school to put some wins on the board early, especially when you've been struck. Strom Thurman moves on. 1-0 on the season. Aiken will take their 0-1 record and return here to its home stadium, Haygood Stadium, and take on their crosstown rival, South Aiken, where we will have the Gold's Gym Game of the Week next week as we uh, have the crosstown rivalry game that we've traditionally had at the end of the season. We've actually had it at the beginning a couple of different times, and yep. that was because South Aiken dropped back to 3A for a couple of years, and Aiken was the 4A team. Now the shoe's on the other foot. Aiken's dropped back to a 3A, so they're going to play this game at the beginning of the year. They're not in the same conference anymore. Well, I think it's a game that needs to be played, okay? It, it stirs up a lot of interest in Aiken, and uh, both teams, uh, that frankly, the last couple of years, they've been down a little bit, so I think they can both be optimistic about they do well next week, get in the one, get in the win column. Uh, they could start a good season for themselves. And if you're wondering, they will actually see Silver Bluff again in a couple of weeks as we will travel to the Bluff, Petticoat Junction. And that's been traditionally one of the best games that we do every year. No question. Is especially when Strom travels to Silver Bluff. Al Lown, no matter what he has, <laughs> seems to be ready for whomever comes into that place. And we've seen some great games over there between Strom Thurman and uh, Silver Bluff. One of the things that I particularly enjoyed seeing was uh, when Lee was coaching uh, at Strom Thurman and you had Lown and uh, Sawyer going at each other and they, they were both good friends, very competitive, and uh, it was always a good football game. Well, there you see the Security Federal scoreboard. Strom Thurman comes out on top 17-10 over Aiken High School. We'll take a break and we'll come back and talk about tonight's game and any more upcoming thoughts that we have for next week's when we return on the Goals Gym Game of the Week. Tyler's Tire and Auto Center, founded in 1963, family owned and operated for 50 years and dedicated to customer service with safety of your family, our top priority. Tyler's Tire is a full service tire retail, tire repair, and automotive repair facility with ASC certified mechanics. Located in two locations, 1019 Richland Avenue West and 1518 Whiskey Road. Let our family take care of yours, Tyler's Tire and Auto Center. You can smile. I love to smile. I was so pleased that I could get all of my dentistry work done in just one visit. You can smile. Painless, that's how I would describe it. Here at the Center for Dentistry, it has been a wonderful experience. With the comprehensive nature of this office, this one office, I can bring my family here and we can have it all done at one place. You can smile. Center for Dentistry, 1391 Silver Bluff Road, Aiken. From our Looney Tunes Savings Club that teaches young people their first lessons about managing money to free financial counseling services for adults, Security Federal Bank grows with our customers and has a service to meet every need. Established right here in Aiken County in 1922, we continue to be your hometown bank. We always work to meet the changing needs of our customers. That's why we've become a company that can meet every need for financial services. From online banking, bill pay, mortgage products, trusts, and a full line of insurance products. If we were you, we'd bank with us. Were you hurt on the job? 
Are you trying to keep your work comp payments? Do you feel like no one is listening? Your employer, the company doctor, the insurance company? Well, we're listening. We have a team dedicated exclusively to helping people hurt on the job. Our workers' compensation team has helped hundreds of injured South Carolinians. Call us now and let us listen to you. For a legal consultation, contact the ChandlerLawFirm.com. You can count on Chandler. At Specs Vision Center, we are focused on total eye care. Be it our large selection of designer frames, latest and contact lenses, or our great sunglass collection, we have just what you're looking for. Our doctors offer years of experience and use the latest technology to ensure a comprehensive eye examination. Late afternoon and Saturday appointments are available, so if you want the best in eye care, call Specs today at 642-9902. Most people think the Y is a gym, but to me, it's so much more. When I needed help, the Y gave my kids a scholarship to a safe place where they could grow, learn, and have fun. And when I was struggling with all kinds of health issues, they gave me the guidance and motivation to get well. The Y helps families create a better future and become so much more. So give, join, or volunteer at the Y. Since 1970, Bragg Heating Company has been keeping Aiken and the surrounding communities comfortable. Our factory-trained staff can keep you on top of the latest in heating and cooling technology, and our complete metal shop allows us to make any specialty piece your home may need. We recommend the best systems for your home, Train, Carrier, Dakin, Mitsubishi Ductless, and Bosch Geothermal Systems. We accept most major credit cards and offer financing, so when you need your system maintained, repaired, or replaced, called Bragg Heating Company. We're here to make you comfortable. One evening we were sitting around the table and my four-year-old stood up in his chair and he said, Dad, I want to be just like you. And I thought, that's great, until he said, I want to be nice and big and fat. It was at that moment I realized I need to make a change. I took the scales at over 208 pounds, and that was the point that I realized I really needed to make a change. In fact, we both really needed to make a change. Together, we have lost 150 pounds, and our family has a healthy new future. Pruitt Health is here to help. For more than four decades, Pruitt Health has partnered with healthcare professionals to deliver exceptional care to families across the Southeast. Since the beginning, our focus has always been on quality, quality programs, quality services, and quality people. Looking forward to the future, we've developed an innovative model of care to provide comprehensive, streamlined solutions. Get well for life with Pruitt Health. What a crowd we have on hand tonight. And last, before kickoff, here comes the game ball. Set to be brought in from the sky by parachute. The crowd has spotted him as he comes in for a landing. Oh, that's got hurt. From orthopedics to neurology, imaging to pain management, or even if a good idea just turns into an accident, CMI can help you play again. Learn more at cmi.md. Since 1948, Holly Tractor has been Aiken's place for farm equipment, implements, accessories, and supplies. But did you know that Holly is your place for home yard equipment too? Riding and push mowers, weed eaters, chainsaws, and brands including Kubota, Husqvarna, and still equipment you can depend on. Come inside and see our expanded showroom. Holly is the exclusive dealer for Yeti coolers and now carry Generac generators. Holly Tractor. 1721 Richland Avenue East. Two and a half years ago, we had our first child at Aiken Regional. When our second child was on the way, we knew we wanted to go back to women's life care. But this time it got complicated. At 25 weeks pregnant, I had to have my gallbladder removed. I would have been terrified, but Dr. Mento and his staff were so caring. When you trust your hospital this much, there's really no reason to go anywhere else. I should know. I was born there too. Unique Expressions in the Mitchell Shopping Center is a treasure chest of gifts for all occasions. 
The Collegiate Collection is second to none. South Carolina, Clemson, Georgia, ACC or SEC. Support your favorite school. From clothing to mailboxes to tailgating items, Unique Expressions has them all. Handbags by Spartina and the Vera Bradley Collection. And a U.S. Post Office on site for your mailing convenience. Stop in today at Unique Expressions, 1521 Whiskey Road. Welcome back. Goals Gym Game of the Week. Strom Thurman victorious over Aiken High School here on the campus of Aiken High at Haygood Stadium. 17 to 10, the score on the Security Federal School Board. And uh, we've had Noah fight trying to round up a coach to get to the Holly Tractor sideline report and hear from the winning coach. And uh, apparently he's very popular <laughs> and they wanted him on radio and they <laughs> wanted him here and they wanted him there. So he has been able to, to get that all together. So what we'd like to do at this point in time is we're going to go ahead and share with you who the Center for Dentistry MVP of tonight's Gold's Gym Game of the Week. And uh, we have came up with a unanimous decision. Yes, we did. And I think we made the right decision. And uh, that answer is? Uh, the quarterback from Strom Thurmond, Tyree Stidham. All right. And uh, there's a number of reasons that I voted for him. I happen to be one of the ones that <laughs> gets get a vote. vote. <laughs> okay. Uh, I thought he handled... Uh, ran the ball game well, managed the game very well. Of course, he scored the uh, winning touchdown late in the ball game. Some nice throws, a couple of big passes, a screen pass to uh, Tyrese Nick, and uh, also the one that he made early in the ball game to uh, Gilchrist. And I think he had an outstanding ball game in his first start as the starting quarterback for Strom Thurmond. He's got to have a, a big role this year for them to be very successful. I thought he ran the ball well threw the ball well, managed the game, what more can you ask? Yeah, you know, and I voted for him as well, and the, the reason being, we don't even have all the stats to give you the exact what he was on offense as far as passing and rushing, but the fact of the matter is, is he didn't make mistakes. No. Didn't throw any interceptions, didn't have any fumbles, and on a night where Aiken did a great job on Gilchrist, who we expected to, to run wild, quite frankly, uh, it was up to Stidman to do that, and uh, I don't know that he had 100 yards rushing, but he's probably somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, he was efficient the whole night long, and he's taken over for a legend mm -hmm. in Javier Hammond, who was just outstanding, and this is his first game where he's in charge. He played a tough Aiken High School football team. Aiken came out ready to play, played him tough, and, uh, and the important thing, and I think all high school coaches, and uh, you've always said this, is just don't make mistakes, and you've got a good chance to win, and sure. they win the game. More games are lost than won <laughs> a lot of the time, you know, and uh, that, that happens in high school football, and I, I agree with you. He handled himself very well out there. Kind of a tough transition from being a wide receiver, which he has been for a few years, and uh, a backup quarterback who didn't get a whole lot of play in time, and now he's got the load on his shoulders. I think he handled it very, very well. Very good. Off to a good start, 1-0. and Aiken falls to 0-1, but... They're not without some positives as we look at some of the, the highlights of the game from both teams. Uh, Aiken's quarterback, um, Bryson Jones, did a good job. Uh, he didn't make any mistakes. I don't think he threw any interceptions, no fumbles on his part. I don't remember anybody from Aiken having a fumble. It's kind of amazing that we, we get through that. We had some some rough plays at times. Yeah. Uh, they were sort of like the, the rough and the punters and penalties and too many men on the field. Aiken probably got the short end of that when we get to the end of the night and look at the penalties. Yeah. That that's probably the difference in the touchdown for both teams is that fact there. But overall, I thought Aiken played pretty efficiently. I'll tell you what, when they came out to start the ball game, the first quarter especially, I, I was very impressed by how efficient they were, how sharp they were. They didn't make mistakes. They moved the football, and uh, the only thing they couldn't do was put it in the end zone uh, early, and th that's too bad. A uh, couple big penalties that we've talked about all night, especially in the kicking game. Uh, we can talk about how, you know, that last penalty really hurt Aiken, but the penalty on the kickoff uh, that Strom Thurman ran back, that was also something that could have easily been prevented and uh, took back a really neat run uh, by one of their outstanding players. Yeah, and, and Aiken, very fortunate to play that the penalty was actually called. Uh, the coaches were carrying on. I was talking to the radio <laughs> crew at halftime. They couldn't believe that the play was called. And it was sort of a late flag. Yeah. And it was more or less a, a player for Aiken stopping running and the Strom Thurmond player not paying attention and ran into the back of him and got a clipping penalty and uh, and took those points off the board. And Strom Thurmond, very fortunate to get come out of here 
with a win, a hard-fought win. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of my things coming into this game, I was curious to see which one of these coaches would get the win. Uh, I really believe that uh, it's not as tough as a lot of people think to follow a legendary coach because you have kids that are used to winning. Okay, you've got a program that's solid. You've got a community that's behind you. And uh, I feel very good, however, for Antoine Hillary, who uh, deserves to be the head coach over there. And I'm glad he got a win in his first uh, ball game. Yeah, you talk about a legendary name in Strom Thurmond history. Uh, Hillary comes up again and again and again. And uh, a lot of pressure on him, too, to come out and do well. Maybe we should have named him the, the player <laughs> of the game, getting that first win. I, I'm sure that it's a – a big monkey off his back to get that one done and uh, move on to the next one. And I believe I'm right that his brother's also coaching with him this year. I think Coco's coaching with him, and uh, he'll uh, probably enjoy so. that. And uh, that'll be good. On the other side of the coin, uh, Brian Neal, I think, has done a nice job. His team certainly looks sharper uh, than they did when he uh, started last season. Okay. And hopefully they'll gain some good things out of this. thought their defensive line did a nice job. One of the surprises for me, a, as well as you, is that they stopped Gilchrist pretty daggone well. Yeah. And I don't, I don't think that was expected at all. We thought that he'd have a, a bigger ball game. Uh, it's no surprise to me that Strom Thurmond won the game. I expected them to win by a couple touchdowns probably. But uh, I thought Aiken acquitted himself quite well. They played a good football game. Some mistakes, but that's going to happen, especially in the first ball game. Now, uh, let's talk about next week a little bit. They're going yeah. to play South Aiken. That's a big game around here. It may not be the biggest game in the state by any stretch of the imagination, but for this community, uh, you know, Aiken playing South Aiken, that's for bragging rights. And uh, Aiken used to have their way with this. South Aiken has come on of late and, and won last year. And you start looking at Aiken and, and what they did tonight. In your opinion, does the fact that they've played a game give them a little bit of advantage over a team who has not played a game? I really believe it does. I, I, I think they've learned some things tonight. They've got a film they can look and the coaches can correct some of the mistakes. Uh, they'll, they'll have a good film session, I'm sure. Uh, South Aiken, on the other hand, uh, they'll be fresh. I'm sure uh, they're, you know, going to be, a, their legs will be a, probably a little fresher, ready to go, unless they beat each other up in practice waiting to, to get to Aiken. But it's a rivalry game. It'll be fun. It'll be exciting. And uh, I think uh, it could set the tone for either team for the season. You know, and, and it, for those of you who know, uh, I don't know whether you've heard it or not, but uh, South Aiken is going to run the fast break offense. And that's going to be the game. situation next week that we'll see South Aiken for the first time running what is o sort of the Auburn, Oregon, is, is what South Aiken has told me they're calling it, yeah. that, that type of offense, which is a little bit of what Strom was running tonight. So it, it'll be interesting to see that that, that is fraught, that, that works. When it works right, it's great. But it also is prone to making all kinds of mistakes. Well, it's, uh, it's hard for me to see a football game when nobody huddles ever. That, you know, that's tough. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot of huddling uh, tonight, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Uh, but that's the way college and high school football goes these days. Even the pros sure. get out there without huddles. I th I th all right, I think Noah is ready with the Holly Tractor sideline report, and he has tonight's winning coach with him, Antoine Hillary. Congratulations, Coach, on Hillary your coach, big congratulations. win. Congratulations. Congrats on your first game. Uh, if you can, tell me your thoughts on the, on the game tonight. Um, you know, first time out, very, you know, a lot of firsts for everybody. Um, it was a first for me, first for my quarterback. Uh, we had a bunch of we got a bunch of young guys up front. Um, but the way we uh, came out in the second half and just, you know, had that will to win, uh, I was really excited about that. You know, I told the guys, you know, I, I'm not worried about anything else right now but a W. Uh, we can go back, you know, uh, to the drawing board next week and try to get some stuff corrected. Um, but I thought we did a good job in the second half. Aiken has a great football team. Uh, talk to me a little bit about uh, about your team's performance in, when they're in a, a tough situation, um, going against a team on their home field, all pumped up in the opener, where, um, like you said, they are a young group and they, they could have folded under adversity. Yeah. Um, yeah, again, I thought we just did a good job, of, you know, to keep fighting uh, more than anything. I think the guys proved that they got a little fight in them. Um, you know, defense, we gave up some yardage, some tough yardage. Uh, we had some, some bad penalty breaks. But uh, and like I told my guys, you can't control the referees. You just got to play that next snap. And, uh, again, in the second half, I thought we did a good job of just, again, finding a way to win. That's the most important part. It seemed like uh, your running game really took control down the stretch. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we struggled a little bit up front. You know, they got two big guys in the interior, um, two big tackles that's really hard to move, um, 75 and 76, I believe. Uh, but them, they both had great games, um, and they're going to give a lot of people some fits, not just us. Um, but I thought we found a way to get it done. And, that's you know, again, that's what I'm more excited about, just, you know, not quitting and, uh, you know, just getting the W. And talk a little bit about the performance of this guy standing over here. Uh, we'll talk to him in a second. Uh, what uh, Tyree uh, Stidham uh, meant to you all tonight? Uh, he just did a good job of keeping his composure. Uh, we had a lot of stuff to go wrong. Uh, a lot of people, to, you know, uh, miss blocks and, uh, you know, penalties and all that. But I thought he did a good job of keeping the offense, especially, um, just, you know, just keeping cool. Um, and that was important because, you know, a battle like this, just going back and forth, you got to keep cool and you can't lose your cookies. So I, did, I thought he did a good job of just leading our guys. All right, Coach, congratulations right, again thank on the you. first win. Thank you. Good luck the rest of the way. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Tyree. All right, Noah, we've named Tyree our MVP. This is uh, the victorious quarterback, Tyree Sidham, and his first start as a starting quarterback at Strom Thurmond, if you can. Tell us a little bit about uh, about the performance yeah. tonight. Uh, I just came out, um, studied our game plan that we had today. Um, I really just had had fun, and I do everything for my teammates. You know, it's more about more important to them than you know me to get this W. You know they work hard just like everybody else, and we just came out had fun. Coach was just praising um, your your leadership skills. Now I know you you've been uh, the backup quarterback the past few years, but uh, you know how how is that something that's become part of your game as far as um, picking up that role as a leader? Um, being a leader is um is is more as it's a more want to, mm -hmm. and I feel like just stepping up in that role is good for the team because they see that when we got something bad going on, you know I don't lose my cookies. I stay you know calm and collect, and I just cheer on my boys. You know, keep them going. And talk about those two touchdown runs. Oh, uh, the first one, it was just, it was just, I had to make a cut. It was a pass play, and I rolled out, and nothing was there, and I just had to make a couple moves. The second one, it was just wide open, thanks to the line. And um, Chad, he blew up the linebacker, and it just was wide open. And how satisfying is it to uh, come away with a win in your first start as QB? It's great. It's great because... My teammates, they, they really wanted this win, and they looked up to me to you know, push us through this, and I promised them that we was going to get this W tonight. Well, you did, and congratulations on that, and best of luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Okay. All right, thank you, uh, Noah, and thank you, Tyree. Tyree, the most valuable player, the center for dentistry, most valuable player tonight. And uh, I'd forgotten about he scored both the touchdowns. I think we made the right call. He scored both, and I'm glad to see that Noah thought he was the most valuable player, and uh, so did his coach. That's great. <laughs> so we were right. <laughs> so it, it was unanimous all the way around. All right, that's going to do it for tonight's game. Again, next week we'll be right here at Aiken High School for the Gold's Gym Game of the Week, where South Aiken will travel across town, and we'll hope that you'll be joining us 7 o'clock, signing on then. But for now, for Ken Brace, for Noah Fight. For James Grigsby, our director, I'm Ed Gerardo. Thank you for joining us tonight. We'll see you next week on the Gold's Gym Game of the Week. At Specs Vision Center, we are focused on total eye care. Be it our large selection of designer frames, latest in contact lenses, or our great sunglass collection, we have just what you're looking for. Our doctors offer years of experience and use the latest technology to ensure a comprehensive eye examination. Late afternoon and Saturday appointments are available, so if you want the best in eye care, call Specs today at 642-9902. Most people think the Y is a gym, but to me, it's so much more. When I needed help, the Y gave my kids a scholarship to a safe place where they could grow, learn, and have fun. And when I was struggling with all kinds of health issues, they gave me the guidance and motivation to get well. The Y helps families create a better future and become so much more. So give, join, or volunteer at the Y.
Since 1970, Bragg Heating Company has been keeping Aiken and the surrounding communities comfortable. Our factory trained staff can keep you on top of the latest in heating and cooling technology, and our complete metal shop allows us to make any specialty piece your home may need. We recommend the best systems for your home, Train, Carrier, Dakin, Mitsubishi Ductless, and Bosch Geothermal Systems. We accept most major credit cards and offer financing, so when you need your system maintained, repaired, or replaced, call Bragg Heating Company. We're here to make you comfortable. One evening we were sitting around the table and my four-year-old stood up in his chair and he said, Dad, I want to be just like you. And I thought, that's great, until he said, I want to be nice and big and fat. It was at that moment I realized I need to make a change. I tipped the scales at over 208 pounds and that was the point that I realized I really needed to make a change. In fact, we both really needed to make a change. Together, we have lost 150 pounds and our family has a healthy new future.